occurred to me that almost every important tradition in the world has a map of the people's sexual history. Um, because there are actually two things that make a great civilization. It is where the people build their toilet and how they make love. <laughs> so, my Igbo people have no at home. Um, archaeology of sex, except the stories we drop here and there. And uh, you go to Equiano, you find one, you go to Achebe, you find one, and you go to my grandmother, you find another. Hello. Next week, the man who killed South African anti-apartheid activist, Chris Hanai, will be released. The Chief Justice of South Africa ordered Minister in Charge of Correctional Services to place the Polish immigrant, Yanis Vanus, who killed Hanai in 1993 on parole. The news led to protests by members of the African National Congress, ANC. The ANC has promised that the protest at the steps of the Constitutional Court will be the first of many. Values shot Hanai to death in April 1993, while he stepped outside his home to pick up the newspaper. The reason he gave for killing Hanai was to stop the transition from white minority rule to democracy. At the time of his death, he was the second most popular South African politician besides Nelson Mandela. Valus received the death penalty, but was later reduced to life in prison after South Africa abolished the death penalty in 1994. His planned release has angered a lot of South Africans. Today, Morocco defeated Belgium 2-0 in a Group F match at the ongoing World Cup in Qatar. Moroccans in Belgium had to choose what country to root for as the two countries met at the World Cup. There are almost 500,000 Moroccans in Belgium. They have been going to Belgium to work since the 1960s. This is Morocco's second time meeting Belgium at the World Cup. In 1994, Belgium defeated Morocco 1-0. Morocco has yet to reach the knockout stage in their last two appearances in the World Cup in 1998 and 2018. The Democratic Republic of Congo will hold its presidential election in December next year. The Electoral Commission announced December 20th as the date for a new election. The current president, Felix Tashikidi, and said he will run for re-election. The president took over from Joseph Kabila in January of 2019. It was the first time in the country's history that a peaceful power transfer happened. It is 4.30 p.m. in Lagos, Nigeria, 10.30 a.m. in New York City, 5.30 p.m. in Johannesburg, South Africa, and 7.30 p.m. in Kinshasa Democratic Republic of Congo. Wherever in the world you are watching us, welcome to another episode of 90 Minutes Africa. My name is Rudolf Okonkwo. My co-host, Chido Onoma, is on assignment. On our show today is Dr. Obiwo Iwanyang. Take a look. You know, at the best writing, it's like, um, who would I compare you to? It's like Taika who is playing golf or Makeda is playing music. They really, they really cannot play anything that is bad. But it's just that they, they are bad. It could be the best of the best writer out there or the best player out there. So um, I, I think it's great any day. All right. So Obi Wu is the author of Ebos of Northern Nigeria. Tigress at Full Moon, Rituals of the Sun, The Critical Imagination in African Literature, Essays in Honor of Michael J.C. Echero. What is Literature? Critical Essays on Zera Pond, Chinua Achebe, 
Roy Campbell, Nam Dezekiwe, Langston Hughes, Christopher Kibo, Dennis Brutus, and others. He's a professor of world literature and critical theory at Central State University in Ohio, USA. He will be talking about the 2023 elections in Nigeria and the writer's responsibility as an influencer of his society. What do Nam the Azikiwe, Emeko Juku, Kadunan Zoku have in common? They were evils of Northern Nigeria. Nigeria would have been a lot different without these evils of Northern Nigeria. We're going to explore all this as we welcome to the show, Professor Obiwu. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Yeah, Obiwu, nice, nice to see you. Um, I know mm -hmm. that um, the rest of the world, they are watching the World Cup and uh, we're here talking about a different kind of uh, World Cup <laughs> going on. <laughs> I appreciate the time that you, you are spending with us. Um, let's start by um, looking at the situation in Nigeria, the political situation. Have you been following the, the, the campaign for president? Yes, I've been following the campaign and uh, actually I'm watching three men in particular. Peter will be of the Labour Party, Tinubu, Asiwaju Tinubu of the APC, and the article of the PDP. Uh, okay. And uh, I mean, I'm very impressed with Peter Obi. I, I like what he's doing. Um, Asiwaju is, is not to undermine him, but it's rather old and uh, ephemeral. Uh, Atiku has contested for pre presidency for five times. This is about his sixth time. And uh, he ran the last one thereabouts with Peter Obi. Now Peter Obi is going for his uh, Peter Obi is going for presidency with Dati Ahmed. I think they should give you a chance. Peter Obi is a young man. And uh, as a governor, we know what he, we knew what he did. So as president, we know what he, he will do. So that's how much I'm watching him. So, so you you are you're rooting for Peter B, is that? Yeah, I, I'm rooting for Peter B. I'm I, I'm I, I'm obedient. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because because we 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 had um you know of course we know Chimamanda is rooting for Peter B. We had a man here last week. He is supporting Peter B. But when we had someone like Okay Ndibe, he didn't commit to anybody. So so I'm happy that you are able to say that you are rooting for. We because we want to know what the writers are thinking about. But but let, let's look at this Peter B, uh, the, the the candidate. Um Ohanese came out this this week, I think, and, and said that uh, he is their man, but that wasn't a surprise. But they said something that I wanted you to look at. They said that he that Peter B uh, is the the soul of of Ndibo, that is, that he's the more like is the best of Ndibo. Um, what do you think about him as as a representative of um, the Igbo people? Actually, Peter B is not running for president as a as an Igbo man. He's running as a pan Nigerian. Uh, okay, Ndibo, I understand where he's coming from. He's a uh, uh, Uncle in law, or whatever. Tinubu is running for, <laughs> for president. But you should understand that Tinubu is aged and uh, ephemeral and sh shaking all over and being on his pants. I'm sorry to say it, but that's the way it is. And uh, Peter B, uh, if anybody has anything against Peter B, we want the person to get it out now. Than later, uh, he doesn't seem to have any baggages. Uh, his wife is, I saw him, her for the first time in, uh, when they went to Ibadan, and the wife is very, very pretty. They have two children, and uh, Peter B doesn't have any. Uh, in fact, his children, I think his daughter is in Nigeria or something like that, but his son is not in Nigeria. He's an, uh, an actor uh, and he's challenging anybody who has anything against him to bring it out. 
I would like to now, know now, what they have against him. We know what Charles Soludo said about, about Peter B, but that's not the, the important thing today. I, I brought you here because I know you you understand the Igbo people, you've written about them. I, I wanted to give this, um, let, let help us to understand um, the, the man Peter B in the context of people who are thinking, will he be another Namdi Azikiwe or will he be something different? Uh, in terms of his approach to, to politics? No, I don't think Peter B can be compared with Namda Zikwe. I think he can be compared with uh, Alex Ekweme, Dr. Alex Ekweme. Dr. Ekweme was an architect who was vice president of Nigeria. Uh, Peter B uh, has a degree in philosophy and uh, was a businessman, was head of two or three banks, uh, has a first degree, and has almost 18 uh, uh, attendance to various universities. Uh, in fact, the universities he has gone to for ordinary certificate program is outstanding. There are more than anybody I've, I've seen both at uh, Harvard University, Oxford University. Uh, you know, he has all, all these things. And he's been going for understanding how uh, democracy works and how the money works in a third world country like Nigeria for a very long time. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he wins the presidency, and I think he'll win it. No. Okay, you are the author of uh, Ibos of Northern Nigeria. A lot of people are interested in the work. A lot of people are interested in what you mean by that. We'll get to that. But this is the first time that you have a major candidate from the East who is not a member of that group of Ibos of Northern Nigeria. You mentioned the Kweme. You mentioned, um, of course, as Did I mentioned the Kweme. Oh, well, no, no, I don't mean mention him now, but you mentioned him now. That's what I mean. I don't mean yes, in the book. Okay. You mentioned him. I know he, you know, he he was, um, I think he was, he spoke outside to, I think he probably grew up in the north. But uh, you have Zikri. Have, so? uh, I, I never knew about yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he, he does. Yeah, he did also. Uh, so we have uh, Kweme, we have uh, Ujuku, we have um, Nandi Azikiwe. And this, these people had, um, what you could say, oversized role in, in Nigerian history. Uh, but but P2B is not one of those. Um, how do you think that will change? But, but maybe you can start by explaining to people what the, the, the central idea of, of your book, The Igbos of Northern Nigeria. Uh, Igbos of Northern Nigeria is a book I wrote at a point when I was living in Jos, in Plati State, in the middle belt of Nigeria. Uh, I wrote it without knowing what impact it will have. Uh, the other Ezebo just was the one who talked me into writing it. I collected all the newspapers I can lay hand on and wrote it. It was a story of the journey to northern Nigeria by Igbos in southeast Nigeria. And uh, some of them trekked, you can't believe it. And some of them came by, of course, by road. There is no sea accessibility to, to the north anywhere. So uh, they started establishing, you know, motor parts, you know, schools, you know, and hotels in the north. And uh, after a time, they were the only people who were really doing business in the north, you know. And then the killings started in 1945, 53 by northerners, some of whom were jealous, you know, in fact, many of them were jealous of them. And uh, I lived in, in the north, and I, when the boys were establishing SS, as in the, in the in the north, it was my contribution to that generation that led me into investigating how the boys came to the north and how they started all these businesses. Uh, Today is, is a is a story, and uh, many of them were receptive to my contribution, and uh, the 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 book quite sold a lot, I should say. You know. 
So is there any, any difference in Igbos of Northern Nigeria from the other Igbos who lived in other parts of the country or those who grew up in the East? Actually, the, in fact, at a point, one would wonder whether politics in Igbo land was meant for Igbos of Northern Nigeria because all the Igbos were in national politics were similarly born in Northern Nigeria. You know, so I'm glad today that somebody who's who not born there, like Peter Beast, making a, a national wave. But I'm the Aziki way, Ojuku, Chukwemeke Ojuku, Kaduna Zogu, and as you said, uh, uh, Alexander Ekweme, uh, all these people, and many others. For you to be, have a critical hand in Nigeria, you are you are likely to be an Igbo born in northern Nigeria. Jim Wobodo also. Jim Wobodo, in fact, look at it. Jim Wobodo, I didn't mention his name in the book. But there were a lot of, of them. It was as if they were all born in exile. And they were operating from exile and all that. They spoke Hausa. And they, they spoke, uh, many of them spoke Yoruba before they started learning Igbo and all that. So the, the politics they played, because they were insistent on recognizing Northern Nigeria and the Western Nigeria because of they spoke the, those languages. And they will tell you, oh, there will be no, no problem and all that. Still, those people, they, they worshipped, they recognized we are the ones who killed the boys during the uh, massacre, during the uh, pogrom. You know, it was not a, a, a good thing. Like they were being killed, Ojuku asked them to go back. They went back and they were killed again, you know, which was what le led to the war. But of course, there are remote and immediate causes of the war. But this was central to the to the civil war. Uh, I'm glad Peter B is not one of them, though he has a, a central vision of Nigeria. Mm. You know? <laughs> now, now, <laughs> people, people, people think that um. Because of uh, someone like uh, Zeke, his understanding of Nigeria, where he grew up, he was more eager to compromise um, in certain certain things. Uh, do you do you think it's a positive thing or negative thing that that they grew up um, in in northern Nigeria? Zeke is a complicated character. I love the role he played in Nigeria. Quite all right. Uh, but I, I'm not about to excuse everything he did. Uh, as Ojuku learned very bitterly, even though he came after Zeke. I think Zeke was his godfather, so to speak. But I would like them to be a bit dispassionate, to be a bit removed from the fact that they were born in northern Nigeria. And look at Nigeria again. And if Nigeria is uh, important to be recommended, then, then they, they should recommend that Nigeria. Uh, I want a Nigeria as a federated country so that anybody who is recommending anything to the Igbo, to the Yoruba, to the Hausa, they will recommend it as a federated country. Not a place you must go and live and die, you know? I lived in North for 10 years myself, for 11 years. Uh, I had a bit of the experience they had that's not why I should recommend Igbos to be in the north and die in the north and all that. They have a home, you know. If we are to go back to Nigeria, we found a republic and uh, our houses in the north will be given to us as residents and all that. That's what I think. I, I think uh, Obi is better. Okay. Yeah, yesterday we talked about um, oil that was discovered in the north and um, in Gombe. Uh, what, what do you think about that? Do you think that is a game changer? Honestly, I don't know the quantity of oil that is in the, in the north, but I, I wish they would discover oil in many parts of the north so that the northern, northern Nigerians can leave southern Nigeria alone. Today, oil is in the southeast, but they are they are 
kind of being distributed in the north, and the petrochemical industries are in the in the north, and the ministers of petroleum are from the the north. Let them discover as much oil as they like in the north. Let the uh, the, the and the, let them allow Nigerians to share in the oil. But let us also know that there are many other uh, earners of foreign exchange from Nigeria, like in farming. You know, the East used to have pet, uh, palm oil. The West used to have uh, uh, co cocoa. The North used to have granos, uh, gran peanuts. You know, but now they don't have those things. I wish they can develop more uh, areas of farming. Today, when we send money to Nigeria, those who live abroad, I send money to Nigeria regularly. Many of my friends send, send money to Nigeria always. That's about a capital income compared to the oil that they are struggling for. 30 billion naira. Come on, 30 billion naira. Some other countries are manufacturing shoes and clothes for over 30 million naira, 62 million naira. So uh, I, I think they should. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. L last week we had um, Wemapan. You know Wemapan. Um, yes. Yeah. Uh, he he wrote a new book that came out last last year called uh, New York, uh, My Village, and and he made some statements that a lot of people took issues with. I, I want you to weigh in on that. Let me play you a video of Wem on this show last week. Republic of Nigeria, who could who could disobey Ojuku and live? Emmanuel Efia Juna, is he alive? Such an icon, a winner. Is he alive? He couldn't. So Ojuku was not someone you could disobey. Biafra was a terrorist state, especially in minority lands. I'm sorry to say this, but this is our story. And anybody who is sincere, you should ask your minority neighbors. If you, uh, Rudolph, if you know minority people here, apart from who happened in the US, ask them <laughs> what they feel about Biafra. Our people just sit down like this and look and say, what is this? No, Biafra was evil, unqualified evil in minority lands. It was so bad, we can't even talk about it. <laughs> uh, All right. So, what is your take on that? Honestly, I have been keeping my quiet, trying to maintain civility, not to talk about Womakban as a writer. Uh, but I understand he was born in 1977 or thereabouts after the war. So, all these things he's talking about. I, I think it's reported to him. For instance, is, is, was it Ojuku that killed Ifajuna? Ifajuna was the one who surrendered Biafra and lived long after Biafra. You know, so did Ojuku kill him when Ojuku came back from from uh, exile? Anyway, I understand what if uh, Omakban is. Say, no, hold, hold on, hold on. Are you saying if I, you know, was he not, um, was he not oh, killed oh, during the I war? I mean, uh, Efion, Philip Efion. No, no, he wasn't talking about Efion, he was talking about if I, you know, there. Okay, what is he talking about? If I, you know, if I, you know, was an evil man, if I, you know, carried out a queen in Biafra, if I, you know, one of those that tried if I, you know, was Professor Ben of Munsalo, who tried him, who was secretary of the panel, who was his classmates. At Ibado. Uh, Bosello was the first president of Ibado Student Union. Uh, Ojuku was a friend because he found a mother his life after Ojuku. His father worked for Ojuku's father. What I say, if I if I'm talking about, if I'm not, I mean, a uh, woman, let me also correct an impression. I said uh, 30 million naira. I meant 30 billion naira. And uh, $30 million, you know, uh, Nigeria's earnings from oil. But uh, our friend, who does know what he's talking about. Uh, if I, if, if I, you know, I was killed in Biafra for carrying out, carrying out a coup, 
I wasn't there. But what would Uber Ban has it have against that? Let you up and talk about things you know. I know he's a good writer. I know he makes them from writing. But he shouldn't be talking about things he doesn't know at all. No. Okay. Let, let me let me play you another another part of the video where he talked about um let, let's see if, if this is the right one. Um let's, it's let's not, you know. Look, I've told you I've done this research for 30 years. I even want to tell you that there are people of the generation of, you know, uh, let's just say Chebe generation, Akweme generation, the leaders back then, they knew exactly what happened to us. Most of them knew about it. They knew what happened to us. This is why it's been very difficult for the egos to talk about the minorities. They always skip it because if you say Yoruba Hausa, it means that they, these were the Nigerian, the ethnicities that basically formed the Nigerian army. If you say against Igbos, the Igbos are the victims. Once you introduce this minority thing, and you see what that there's no crime Nigeria committed on the Igbos that they. Yeah, he's saying that um, there's no crime that Nigeria committed on the Igbos that the Igbos did not commit in, in minority areas. And, and that uh, people like Achebe knew about this story and, and that he researched this story for 30 years. Do you think <laughs> that the minorities, they have they have um, a story here? Do, they, do you think, do you, do you believe them? Well, the Igbos, Igbos may have uh, had a hand in what happened to the minorities. Uh, I don't know to what extent, and uh, the researcher for 30 years doesn't know the, to what extent. When you research, you have to have a, a bent. You have a voice bent, you have a, a bent of your knowledge. So whatever you hear, you add two and two together or not. So he's been doing a lot of miscalculations uh, in his research. His research starts from the point of view that Igbos intimidated minorities or cajoled minorities or killed minorities. So all his all the research is doing is bent on this singular fact. But Igbos were fighting for to extricate from themselves from Nigeria from the hands of the Hausa. In fact. When the Hausas were killing Igbos, the Yorubas in the West had a hand in killing Igbos who lived in Lagos and the battle. Even though they were not the ones who started this thing. You know, it gets complicated. At the time, you start thinking, will the Igbos start targeting Yorubas or something like that? But no, it is just that when a killing like that started, you have to try to push out the Igbos from their own place to take over their property. So maybe Igbos were also trying to push out the minorities in the East to take out their properties because they have lost things in the West. Uh, let me tell you. Uh, what's his name? The, the man from... Uh, oh. What's his name? I forgot his name. From, from where? From River State. From uh oh, uh, Ken Sarowa. Ken Sarowa. Ken Sarowa. He he was educated with Igbos at University of Lagos. He ran to University of Nigeria during the war. He found his wife at University of Nigeria, even though she was a reverse girl. But Ken Sarowa ran out of University of Nigeria in the night to go to join Nigerians, to bring Nigerian soldiers back to Bonny. He was made at, 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 uh, an administrator of Bonny. But Kensaro Uwa, many of his older brothers were 
serving at the cabinet of Nigeria with Ojuku. When he targeted them after the war and started calling them vultures, those who who served with Ojuku and their children who served who are in the East or who are in post-modern Nigeria started calling the Igbos. Would they not do anything? Ojuku, because of that, could not listen to him. And he was targeting Ojuku all along. Ojuku turned around, said, and told him, uh, go and look for whoever your father is. I don't know him. You don't look like me. In fact, when others are standing up, you are, you are kneeling down. That was the first time Ojuku replied to Kensarewa. And he was killed by a butcher, a northerner. A northerner who, uh, whose people were killing the Igbos. It was not an, an Igbo man that killed Kensarewa, even though he was an Eastern minority. Kensarewa died badly. I don't celebrate it. He was my friend. But that, that's how this has happened. If Wumatban wants to be like Kesarewa, let him be like Kesarewa, let him fight Ibos, let him revenge against Ibos. Let's see if he will live or if he will not die like Kesarewa. I'm sorry to say it, but many things happened during the war. It's not a, a, anything we can continue to cry about. Yeah, but, but but do you think that there will be healing if if the if the minorities? It's not just uh, when because I've heard from so many people from that area who were saying that they had stories similar to what Wem wrote in the book. If there could be, if there is going to be healing, don't you think that these things are, that have to be revisited and maybe um, examined because um, it may be necessary as part of that healing process? Or you don't think it's it's, it's needed? No, no, I actually believe. There needs to be a healing, like it was saying. Achebe knows this. Uh, 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 this person knows this. If Achebe knows what the Igbos did, they did to his people. What will Achebe do? Ask me. Achebe will not do anything. Achebe will not march onto Ojukwa and tell him leave uh, 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 the, the people alone. You see, if there is, there should be healing. All of us should forgive one another. All of us should apologize for what he did. They have their their rights now. They are in command of their of their language and their people, you know. So they should fight over their things. There is something about human beings. My parents had no hand in what happened to minorities. My uncle was killed. You know, coming from Cameroon through the Calabar area. He was killed on the way when he was, when he was running. You know, uh, I think we should find a way to forgive each other and build afresh. As Peter B is coming, I just hope Peter B wins. You know, let us start a new, a new Nigeria. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. Now, why, why we hope that the political process will go well and, and we have a leader who everybody will accept. We also know that there is an alternative process going on and it's connected to what we're discussing about Wem's idea. I mean, the people in the minority area. Uh, he raised the issue of one is that uh, writers, who writers, when they write the story of the war, they write from the perspective of the Igbo people. Like he mentioned Chimamanda's book, uh, Half of a Yellow Sun, as an example of a book that totally ignored what the minority went through. But you, you can leave that aside. But you think about uh, the alternative, which is the Biafra movement, which is still alive, and which is still in, in some time, sometimes when you listen to the, the people who are advocating for Biafra, they also include the minority areas as part of Biafra. With this, with people feeling the way that Wim is feeling about the last one, how do you think that the new one will, will succeed? <laughs> well, uh, I have sympathy for uh, uh, Nam Dikano, though I, I, I don't prophesy the same thing he's doing. I have sympathy for him because I don't want him in jail and I don't want the Northerners to be subjecting him to humiliations in jail. 
But I'm praying for uh, Peter B. If you ask Peter B today, I'm sure he will have a different viewpoint about what Igbos can do in the to the minorities to East Eastern Niger, Nigerian East of the Niger or Eastern Nigeria. Uh, there are many things that happened in Nigeria during Biafra. And all the people who are angry, most angry about it now, are those who are born after the war. Uh, among the Igbo, the Igbos who are bit, very bitter, angry about it, are those born after the war. And the minority is people like uh, Omar Ban who are angry. They should check their temper, lower their temper. You know, why we go about looking for how we, what we can do, to, you know, together. <laughs> mm. All right, Let, let's move on to uh, some of your work. You are uh, an expert on Chino Achebe, and um, November 9th, uh, 16th was his birthday, and next year it will be 10 years since he he died. Um, so, so thinking about that, 10 years after, what is the... How is his work received today? <laughs> I think uh, uh, Achebe's work have come to stay. Uh, things fall apart. Arrow of God, no longer, no longer at his antis of the Savannah. All this work have come to stay. Uh, I don't know whether. When my band knows that they, they have come to stay, whether well, there, there is something he can do about them, <laughs> 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 you know. Uh, Chimamada is is writing very ferociously, and uh, I've been reading some of his her work. You may not know it, of course, or you may know it. Chimamada is a friend of mine, and uh, I, I read some of her work. From from foundation, uh, unfortunately, I've not read anything by Uwomaban. I knew he, him as a writer, and I knew he was anti Biafran, and that thing is is not making me read his work. Hold, hold but, on, hold on. You've not you've not read anything by Wem. I have not read anything by Wem. Not I've even read... uh, tell them you are one of tell them you are one of the tell tell them you are one of the short story collections. Yes, you didn't I, read I read a chapter of it from uh, I think New York. Times New, New Yorker, mm, New Yorker, yes, you know. Yeah, but they were not. They were not anti Biafra. They were not talking about Biafra at all. They, the first. Yeah, book. but well, the one I read was not anti Biafra, but I knew that others were anti Biafra. So <laughs> I've not read them, you know, and mm. I studiously did not read them, you know, mm. because I don't want to be reminded of things that make me angry, you know. I I just think. You know, why should not be feeding himself? Ch uh, Chiba Mada has been writing about Biafra in, in a uh, in a revised way. The way Chiba Mada writes about Biafra is not the way Achebe writes about Biafra. You know, so uh, I hope some of them can tell all their messages, can look at the at the war and its effects, as what happened. In, in the war, mm -hmm. who are we going to blame? If you are angry about it, are you going to kill the northerners? You know, I just removed my hand from there. I don't want to be involved in it. You know, I just hope there will be a new Nigeria that will, you know, cater for our uh, for our interests. You know, everybody's interests. A new federated Nigeria. You know, unlike what we want to rise about. And what, uh, you know, I think we can, you can make a federation from what Chiwamada is writing about, actually, than what Wapa writes about, you know. Uh, for those of us who are reading, who are diasporists, uh, I wrote Igbos of Northern Nigeria as a word of telling the Northern Nigerians in fact, a professor of Prophet Ibrahim James, a professor of history from the University of Just, met me at First Bank in Bauchi Road one day and told me 
he asked me, how did you come about Igbo's of Northern Nigeria? I told him, well, I've been living here and I, I see what's happening. He said, that's that's magical. So that that's magical, that he wished he, he could write a book like that. You know, that's it. He's from the Zango Kataf area, Southern Kaduna. And I look at it, it was, I'm not particularly happy about what they do to, to the Igbos, but I'm looking at how some justice can be tempered with mercy anywhere. Mm. Now, now in general, looking at African rights, you know, or Nigeria, if you zero it to Nigeria, what, what are the trends? What do you think about a writer like uh, Kweke uh, and Emezi? Akweke, I have not read anything by Akweke, but I, I, Akweke, was it the one in, in Lagos who is in US now? Um, yeah, well, I don't, uh, yeah, she, 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 I think, yes, yes, the one she's that everywhere, the one yeah, that with, with Chima Mada, okay, Chima yeah, 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 exactly, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> the girl is a uh, hmm. you've not read the fresh water, I think I've read it, I, I think I've read it, but then it's. I don't know what to say about her. Yeah. She's a good writer. But the way she takes on Chimamanda Adichie, she's not she's not she has she has no love lost with Chimamanda. But but it's common yeah. in, in, in literature. I mean, we've had at Chichebe and Shoinka, we had different people fight. I mean, you are yeah. expert on on Christopher Kibo and and other people, this part of no, the no, she's she's not like them at all, because Chimamanda was doing something to favor her, but she was always doing so, something to disfavor Chimamanda. I think her own politics is the politics of of gender. That's why I, I've been having difficulty talking about her. You know, she should in fact let her stay. I, you know, I don't want to talk about her. You know, you don't know how you what you would do to offend her, or what you would do. You know, it's it's not easy to, to love her work. She's always suspect. Everybody's a suspect. She's looking at everybody as a suspect. You know, she carries her war on gender against everybody, everybody, not Igbos and non Igbos alike. If you don't support her, or if you don't believe in her. Sexuation, she will carry away a war against you. You know, let me just leave her alone. <laughs> all right, all right. So this is your latest work. I, I have it here. Um, yes. What is what is poetry? Uh, critical essays on Zara Pond, uh, Chebe, uh, Roy Campbell, uh, Namdi Azikiwe, Langston Hughes, Christopher Kibo, Dennis Brutus. So, so, um, what is the set of poetry in in African writing? Are there still poets out there? I noticed you don't call her Akilokos, huh? Eh? Oh, Ak Akilokos. So, oh, okay. I, I, it's, I don't know who he is. <laughs> <laughs> well, many people don't know about him, but he's the second human being on earth to write uh, write poetry. After uh, mm -hmm. uh, after who now? The first person to write poetry. Uh, you know, he's the second person. He's, a, he's also... He wrote for marching band and uh, several stylists in poetry. And uh, in fact, I see lines from him that I think Okibo may, may have read, you know. So I decided to, to study him. But I wrote about those poets from all over the world, if you, if you like, to show that there is something that is going on in poetry, that the style of poetry in Nigeria and the style of poetry in America or Britain are not very different from each other. You know, of course, you see the language and understand this person is an Englishman, this person is an American, this person is a Nigerian. But their poetry speaks to the, to the same forum and the same people. So if you, ha if you have somebody who falls in love in Nigeria, it's not different from somebody who falls in love to an American. The three 
as a metaphor of love of women is something it is in America and something in Nigeria. So that I think it appears to Okibo the same way as it appears to pound. You know. Uh, mm. That's so, what so, the point uh, I was trying to make. Okay, okay. Let, let me because I, I I'm interested in Christopher Kibo. I I'm sure you are aware of uh, Ale Mazuri's um, uh, book on him, the trial of Okibo, and and what do you think about that? Because because <laughs> it's a it's a question it's a question that intellectuals are being continuously being asked. Um, why they don't um, risk it all? Uh, why do they stay on the sideline? I I, I posed that question to Obin Wakama when he was on this show. Um, you know, people like you um, stay back in the universities and um, I, we don't see you, you know, out there in front, you know, pushing for whatever change. Um, you publish your works. Sometimes it's not even accessible to ordinary people on the streets to buy, you know, until we bring you, drag you out to shows like this, regular people will see you and know that you are working. What, what do you think about that? Uh, <laughs> Ali Mazuri happened to have known Okibo. Uh, he's married to a Nigerian in the middle beds in Benue. And uh, he worked for Gowan. But he was always championing the cause of Northern Nigeria. In fact, it's what we are saying. Whatever Ali Mazuri wrote about Okibo was based on the fact that he was working for Northern Nigeria. So if Okibo joined the, the Biafran army, Ali Mazuri must find fault with it. That was the basis of his writing on Okibo. Uh, his book has no basis at all. And uh, I think it's, it, it's better forgotten the way it's forgotten now. Uh, Okibo is not the first person, poet, who joined the war, or the first poet who died in the war. He may have joined the war the way, uh, you know, Ezra Pound joined the war, the way, you know, many people of, all over the world joined the war. Uh, okay, but actually found fun in the war. The, then his Brutus went to exile, uh, you know, but uh, Archilocos fought in the war, fought in several wars. The Archilocos angle was that he was the child of, should I say, a whore? His father, a noble man, made love to the mother and went on with the war. And the uh, Archilocos later discovered who his father was, and they decided they would fight in the war more than his father. Uh, but Okibo could not bear the Nigerian Civil War because he was married to another man, for goodness sake. He had a, a daughter who, whose mother is in the, in the north and whose father is an Igbo. So he knew about this. And when he was fighting in Biafra, his child was on the other side of the war, you know. But these are things that, that happen in a war. A poet does not choose his life in a war. He would have been involved in the war if he didn't, wasn't involved as a soldier. He'd be involved as a diplomat. He chose to be involved as, as a soldier and died in the war. So what Ali Mazuri was writing was nonsense. It wasn't up to him at all. All right. Let me let me play a clip from your presentation at um, a conference. Um, you were talking about uh, Igbo sex. I, I yeah. didn't know that's part of academic you know, study. To me that <laughs> almost every important <laughs> tradition in the world has a map of the people's sexual history. Um, because there are actually two things that make a great civilization. 
it is where the people build their toilets and how they make love. <laughs> so, my Igbo people have no at home. Um, archaeology of sex, except the stories we drop here and there. And uh, you go to Equiano, you find one, you go to Achebe, you find one, and you go to my grandmother, you find another. Um, <laughs> a kind-hearted man blows out sand from the vagina. A kind-hearted man blows out sand from the vagina. Well, luckily for me, I have, as I told you, I have three daughters. Luckily for me, my kids don't play in the sand anymore. They play in the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I played in the sand, so it was easy to know how that happens. Uh, <laughs> All right, Professor Biu doing his research. Um, <laughs> let me <laughs> let me let me get. There's something very important here. Um, uh, Oheito, Oheito, you know Oheito, the yes. writer. Yes. Yes. Um, is, is there more Oheito? Yes, I, I met him at uh, Harvard University during a conference. I think Christopher Kibo conference, and 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 he said to Have you forgotten I was in the, I, I was in the same room with you. This I know, I know you were. There. I know you were there. Yeah, <laughs> I know you were there. So, so there was something that interesting that happened there. He, he met uh, Ch uh, Chimamanda for the first time, and and he said he said something. I don't, I don't know if you remember. He said he was going through chemotherapy at that time. Um, but reading, reading Half of a Yellow Sun, that there were points in the book where he had an erection. And that was, that was interesting because in, in, your, in your presentation there, the African Studies, um, you were talking about Achebe's generation and how they handled the issue of, um, of sex in literature. Can you talk a little bit on that? Oh, I was trying to say that the Achebe generation were trying to handle sex in literature as if it was not there. So when they handle sex, you don't feel anything. You know it's a story somebody tells you or a story they had from their mothers. Like uh, if you uh, touch her waist, she says don't touch. If you touch her hand, she says, don't touch. If you touch her back or whatever, she says, don't touch. When you touch her waist bead and all that. Now, you don't feel anything from that. Uh, but when you read sex in uh, Chimamanda, you feel it. That was uh, what Ezen uh, Heto was talking about. You feel it. You see it, you know it is going to happen, and uh, you don't hold yourself back from it. Mm. When you, uh, even uh, if, even Shoinka, you see it and he de she, he describes it, you don't feel it, and it passes. You know that generation were brought up in the same way, and they were writing the way they were brought up. Unlike my generation. I think my generation or uh, maybe it's my mother's generation because my generation, I don't know who was writing. Uh, it's my mother's generation describes it intimately. All right. So we are going to, in another six minutes, we are going to bring in our audience members to join us and have a conversation with you. Uh, uh, but but uh, as we uh, wait for them to come in and we get to that, let me let me ask you. So in general, when you look at um, how things are going in the publishing industry um, for Africans, what is your take? Do you think that that things are going in the right direction or in the wrong direction? Um, the writers who write mainly in Nigeria. I don't know how their work is being promoted. 
But it's those who publish abroad in Europe and America. Some of them are going back home to be republished by those in Nigeria. Uh, but they're doing well. They're doing well. I, I'm impressed with the way Chumada is writing, with the way Wemakban is writing. Uh, so many of them are writing very well, and they are being celebrated. They are getting a new a new prize these days, unlike the prize Achebe uh, Shoenka Generation got. You know. All right, we, we are going to we're going to let me let me get uh, Doctor Osi. I think he's going into the ward. Uh, he's going to see his patients. He's been around for for a while. I want him to uh, talk to you before we continue. Osi, you are you are you are you are on. Uh, hold on. Let's see. I'm go sorry. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Give me five minutes. Okay. Let's see him go okay. first. Okay, okay, see him. Okay, see him. Down somewhere. Yes. Okay, okay, see him. Go ahead. Um, okay. Can, uh, thank God. Am I, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, I can, can hear you hear, very well. Okay. Let me. Okay, you can hear yeah, me. Yeah, we can hear you. Go um, ahead. First yeah, and go foremost, ahead. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, yeah, um, Obi Wu. Yes, you may afternoon. have forgotten who I am. You may have forgotten me, and uh, and, you, and I won't blame you. But I can I can never forget you in my life. This is a book <laughs> you sent to me in two thousand seven. If you remember, what's the name? Ibos of Northern Nigeria. I read about it. I read uh, something you put up in Nigeria. Uh, so. Uh, so I, I replied, I requested for it, and you speak it. I've read it. So because today, I, because I know you are coming, at least let, let this be uh, the first informal meeting we are meeting. At least let me <laughs> do faces today. This is me. Yeah. So, Can you tell me your name? So I'm, I'm particular. Okay, Mike, my name. Yeah, Mike Udebune is my name. This is your book. Yes. So, <laughs> so what I like about this book, Rudolph will permit me two minutes. <laughs> Chapter eight. Okay. Persecutions and triumph. The story was told that at the end of the civil war, at the end of the Nigerian civil war in 1970, many people outside Nigeria thought the Igbos were finished. <laughs> both physically and spiritually. So as the war ended, revival began to troop back to the cities across the country. Everybody marveled. But where are the people coming from? They asked. But non Igbos can be eye struck only because they are not Igbos. Everyone who has accepted his faith without complaining, can overcome it. The Igbo survival instinct runs deep down, as they say. This is because every Igbo man grew up drinking from the perennial grief and tells of those that flow from the mother's tears, words and milk. Even from the womb, the Igbo fetus learns the meaning of perse persecution from the seasonal fast and irregular heartbeats of the mother's blood and fluid are pumped into it. He is born prepared and ready to live in a hostile world. He is a victim of history, and the catalog of persecutions against his kit and kin is familiar to him like this on his palm. In fact, this this is this is this is this uh, this uh, paragraph captures my fancy. Before you now went on to catalog from 1953, all the killings till 1994. So the question I want to put to you is, when you say everyone who has accepted his faith without complaining, can, what made you say that? <laughs> hey. No, um, it's not that you will not complain. It is just that you will have to bear, bear it. I mean, who are you going to complain to? 
who are you going to blame for your fate? And who are you going to kill in return? You will have to deal with it yourself. Uh, those Igbos, I was a child in the war, you know. And as I can see myself today, I can't kill anybody. You know, I can't kill anybody. Uh, so I say, if you deal with it yourself, inside internally, you can overcome. It's not that you are going to complain about anybody. You can do things you want to do with those in mind, but you can't complain about it. <laughs> That's what I meant. Okay, thank you. Um, Osi, go ahead. Ah, okay. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Wanya, Professor Wanya. Uh, that's very, <laughs> that's very enlightening. You know, I have to say. Uh, just to add, <laughs> anyway, just to add anyway, a little th bit. Of thank you very much. Is 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 the. <laughs> It's been a very wonderful. In fact, I, I hope we will meet one day. Okay. I would like to meet you first. Okay. Let's just have a, I, I hope, a personal I hope chat. Meet, meet, I quite like I this book. I treasured it <laughs> since over 10 years. Okay, thank you. All right. All right, CM, thank you. Um, uh, Osi, go ahead. Okay. Well, yeah, so thank you so much, well, Prof. It's been very okay. enlightening. Thank you. And, thank you. Thank you. And, mm -hmm. and entertaining at the same time. I just wanted to piggyback a little bit on what you you know, what you mentioned about the uh, Wema band's uh, uh, outing the last time in, in, uh, in the show. Um, so obviously, uh, Wem is a fine intellectual, a very good writer, highly regarded, and I think it's within his rights to bring into consciousness the plight of what he felt his people endured during the very unfortunate uh, civil war. I mean, we I think we all... Uh, uh, trying to tell that story, uh, just like the rest of the 3 million estimated people that were killed, most of them were actually Igbos, you know. So we keep on trying to, you know, make that point and bring it to people's consciousness so that hopefully that incident won't repeat again in our lives. Uh, but I think one thing that he also has to take into cognizance is the central idea that war is a very, very terrible thing. And when we're in a state of war, things go very wrong, you know. Uh, part of the reason why that is the case is because during war, the worst of human nature comes out. And that's because people know that in that situation, they're likely not to be caught up with the justice system. And so they go about doing whatever they want to do. Because some of those things that, you know, the minorities in the then Eastern Nigeria were complaining, people in the East were doing the same thing. I remember my dad also telling us stories about what the people they called the militias, which were just some kind of local gangs that organized themselves and they were terrorizing everybody in Igbo land, you know, <laughs> bringing it to the idea that in war, you know, the rule doesn't apply, you know. So, and it's not just in Nigeria, it's not even just in Africa. We know what happened with the, 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 when the US invaded Iraq. We know the story about the abuse that happened in the Abu Ghraib prisons by people suspected to be U.S. soldiers. You know, it goes through the same narrative. And so when we situate it properly, I think we, we, we should start to really put things in perspective. I, I wrote an essay last two years and I called it the Nigeria Kills a Mockingbird. And the whole point is the fact that our justice system is so perverted to the extent that when something happens, we don't really try to blame the people that perpetuated those tragedies, we try to generalize it. Just like, you know, you mentioned those uh, Igbos of Northern Nigeria, people like, uh, we, you know, when the Nzogwa and his, his group went and, uh, you know, did all these cues and killed all those people, instead of just, you know, focusing attention on some certain group of people that came together and decided that this was what they were going to do, they generalize it as this is you know, this is an Igbo queue, and they started killing people from all over the place. I think that's the big difference between what happens in our society as opposed to the things that happen, say, mostly in the Western world, because they try to isolate the problem. They don't say when, 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 uh, when, when a, a 
a criminal goes, for example, uh, to go and shoot somebody in the mall, they don't go ahead and kill everybody or the, the town that the, the, the shooter belongs to. They isolate the shooter and know that this is a problem. He didn't sit down with any particular group of people before he went out and perpetrated those crimes. So I think that even as he was trying to make a point, as an intellectual, we have a duty to not muddy the waters because it has a very, very far-reaching implications. If Biafra was such a terrorist state, he should also know that General Philip S. Young was Ojuku's choice. And if at the central command of Biafra, that was the idea, I don't think that uh, Philip F. Young would have loved to serve in that uh, as Ojuku's second in command. Yeah. That, that's just the point I want to make now. Let me not take so much time. I, I'm a chiming later. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Osi. Uh, Thank Obi, you. do you have anything to say uh, to add to that? Uh, yes. In fact, his word is correct. Uh, I don't have anything against Uwema Bana, as, as you may know. I, I, it's better for me to wish my way than, than uh, getting angry with him. What he says is what Igbos who are born after the war are doing today. In fact, in my village during the war, my village was organizing to kill their brothers who were stealing from them during the war. And uh, if you go to a place like uh, uh, Joss, Platy State, Dul Johnson, who is the writer today, a professor, wrote a story about his uncle and the soldiers, Nigerian soldiers, who were, if, if they shoot you down in the war, your brothers will take you, will take you, pieces you, and <laughs> roast your meat for them to find something to, something to eat. <laughs> Nigerian soldiers were eating their fallen colleagues in the war. That's as bad as the war could get. A lot of things happened during the war. Um, but, I mean, other things you said are direct to the point. I accept what you said. Thank you. Thank All right. You. All right. Thank you, Osi. Uh, blessing. Uh, blessing, you have to meet yourself. Blessing is in Nigeria. He, she's joining us from Enugu. Blessing, go ahead. Unmute yourself. Unmute. Yeah, Blessing, we can't hear you. We can't hear, can hear you. We can't hear uh, you, Blessing. Unmute. Unmute yourself. Okay, we, we, maybe she should um, log off and join us again. Obi, let me let me Obi, let me ask you this: Why she does that? Um, th there's been killings again in in Enugu, um, of course, by the, the Fulani um, uh, headsmen. In um, la yesterday, Blessing reported about uh, the incident for us in Enugu. What do you think about that? Why is why is it that there is no solution to this? problem and and the even the governor of Enugu state was seen um, um celebrating somewhere i don't know what he does he there's no sign that leadership in in the southeast are reacting to this you see uh this is about headsmen killing in the Igbo land some people in official position know about it anybody who claims they don't know about it is a liar uh they have been killing some people know that they are killing and that's why they are still there operating but i just hope the Igbos can find out where they are or who they are mm -hmm. and do away with them once and for all of course in this thing if you kill somebody you are going to die by, by killing uh i'm just afraid their life will go into it and then we'll start crying again that Nigerians are being killed or non-Nigerians are being killed because some of them are not Nigerians. You know. All right. Uh, Blessing, can you hear us? I can hear you. My mic is unmuted. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. All right. All right. We can hear you now. Go ahead, Blessing. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Yeah. Good evening. So I, I, I sort of, I do not have a choice but to agree that's sad as it is, all is fair in love and war. 
I where I come from, even as a child, I saw the remnants of the Biafran War. There's this part of our farm, very vast area. Till today, it is concrete. When I say concrete, since I was a child till today, nothing has been farmed on those lands. I I, 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 I know that uh, whenever I try to bring up this discussion with my grandma, there's this palpable fear. There's this regret and sadness. She lost her only brother in the war and she has never recovered from it. Mm. So it's always a touchy topic for me. And I hate to admit that whatever happened then was unavoidable because it was like Mr. Osi said, it was a war situation. There was little or nothing that you could do about the atrocities or not. But having said that, Mr. Opiwu, I am really interested in the um, archaeology of Igbo sex. I... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I, maybe I'm a bit too forward, but uh, yeah, I am really interested because yes, I recall uh, the 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 first time I read the uh, half of a yellow sun. Oh Jesus, it was <laughs> graphic. It was graphic. The pictures will not leave my head, and it's funny because I grew up reading a lot a lot of um a silhouettes silhouette novels and uh, Myra novels, but this time around to have somebody of my own skin color that speaks my language, describes sex the way I, I, I was looking at it, I was like, eh? Yeah, my eyes were constantly popping. And this was something I never got reading any of Achebo's book. And I have read a lot of his works. So something like this. But I, I'm asking, is there such a thing as too much information when you're writing about sex, when you're trying to describe a sex scene, is there such a thing as too much information? That is what I want to know. Um, I don't know whether there is such a thing as too much information. I would like to know that, to say that some writers overplay it, whereas some writers underplay it. There are also writers who measure everything. Chimamanda, you know, plays on, on sex. Um, I don't know. Uh, this guy from the north. Uh, what's his name? My, my student. Oh, um, um, measure time. The one that wrote measuring time. Is measuring it? time. Yes. Yeah. Um. <laughs> all right. Uh, uh, excuse me, my. my um, he was he was my right. student in, in Jaws, and uh, okay, he's very measured the way he writes about sex. Uh, I think everyone today will write about sex the way it appeals to them. Uh, formerly, when I was writing, I measure it. Helen so Habila. Uh, who? Habila. Habila. Yeah, uh, Habila, yeah. yes. Habila measures it. But if I'm writing about it today, I'm not likely to go to, to measure it. My research on Igbo sex, of course, is in, in academics these days, is what we see happening now. So I ask myself, what is the origin of Igbo sex? How did the people know that they can have sex? And of course, if you want to know the story about that, you go back to the folklore, folk tales. And I, I, I came to remember my, the story my grandmother used to tell me as a child. Then I said, oh, is that what she was trying to say? I was a child living with her. I came from Omaha, where my parents were living. I was the only child living with her. And I said, oh my God, this woman was telling me about sex. <laughs> but this was the way she colored it. No, there is nothing like too much information. It's just the way a writer chooses to write about it. Mm. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Thank you. So uh, <laughs> you have another question. Go ahead. Go ahead. A blessing if you want. Yes. Uh, I don't lose that train of thoughts. But too well, uh -huh. I will ask. Uh, <laughs> All right, let, let's let's welcome uh, Obosi. Obosi, welcome to the show. 
Obosi, can you hear us? Um, we can't see your face. Your position is, um, you, you can, but you can go ahead. But if you move around, maybe the light will, will show and we can see your face, so, unless you don't want us to see your face, which is okay. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay, he's gone entirely. So he's trying to re, re yeah. Let me let me see. Uh, oh, 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 be, let me play this. Um, from hold on. Okay, let me play this uh, video a little bit. This is when we. Um, okay, it's not yet downloaded, but um, okay, I think I'm I'm getting it. Uh, let me let me play this and get your reaction. One voice. That is not too political now. One voice is dictatorial. One voice is unacceptable in a plural society, especially irrepressible pluralistic society like Nigeria. Certainly irrepressible individualists like Igbos. Now, my friend, what are Igbos bringing? In fact, they are bringing visible and conspicuous achievement, capacity to turn difficulties to turn these national difficulties into dividends for Nigeria, obstacles into opportunities. Let me tell you the truth. Nations are saved by two kinds of events, either through leadership or through structure, none of which has worked in Nigeria. The Igbo man can change it. He's not a greedy man. He is also not a lazy man. Forget every perception you may have about the Igbo. We both know how to share things and let others begin to take. And he's willing to take the last. Just as we are taking the last of all the zones in Nigeria for presidency. You will see a difference, my friend. The difference will be clear. The difference will be that the country will be stable because you are getting a government that will embrace justice, equity, and fairness. Charity to all and malice to us none. We are the federating people in Nigeria. Yes. If Nigerians live in the moon, Rebo Man is there. He is there. The truth of the matter is that you are just don't want to use their talent. But it's, it is your own loss. Look at it. I went to South Korea in the, seven, in the 80s. South Korea was developed within 10 years. One of the, the advisors, economic advisors that they World Bank sent there was the Kali the Kakal. Go and ask. So, what are we talking about there? We should be speaking with one voice. My friend, we will not speak with one voice. We are not Mumu. <laughs> Igbos will speak with different voices, reasonable different voices, then articulated by a leadership that has a sense of direction and knows what matters. Indeed, with this uh, question of one voice, look at where one voice has kept us. <laughs> no voice anymore. <laughs> Come on, my friend. Don't, don't provoke me with your voice. <laughs> All right. Um, I play that because there's this, this conversation that we don't actually have sometimes. Uh, people uh, like you who study the society, you know about Emayobara and you know about Akanibiam and when they were running things in the East. And, and I want to bring up the issue of the current group of people who run the East, uh, like governors. What changed? Why was it that the people that did it in the past were able to um, have a a kind of a, a idea about where they are going and we don't tend to see that in the group of people that we have now uh, <laughs> the what he's trying to say if you look at mi obara of course he's an umaya man I, I knew him very well I, i'm from i was born in umaya and uh, uh, the Afikbo man he talked about. Those people had a singular mission. They were the first to go to school. So they were like pioneers. They were like pathfinders. Many of the people we have today, like the governor of Imo State, you know, and like all the war happening in, how you, that used to happen in Anambra before, 
these people are not uh, well educated. They don't. Uh, in fact, they, they are not as educated as some of us or the first generation. And as as we say, half education is, is dangerous. You know, these people are not only half educated; they are using their education to mesmerize everybody. That is what he's trying to say. Of course, I know that the governor of Imo State put George Odiozo in the position he is today. You know, he put him as the president of Ohanese because he's son of Imo State to do to do so. I just hope he, he keeps on using his position, knowing how educated he is and championing the cause of Ohanese. Uh, education has, of course, Education is not the cause of Igbo enterprise. In fact, Igbos have their enterprise and they're using education for it. I just hope that people like uh, Peter Obi and uh, just like Alex Ekweme, who served as vice president and who's, who was found nothing, you know, he was not a corrupt man. Peter Obi is not a corrupt man. Uh, if we have such Igbos, we will triumph again at the end. But today, we have so many Igbos, particularly the governors today, here and there, who are just serving themselves and not the people. That's why we don't have any Igbo governor serving the people. Now, Saludo is messing around, even though he's a professor, he's well educated. Uh, I don't have much to say about it. All right, Let, let's go to Ike. Ike, Ike is in uh, Ike is Netherlands. Am I right? Ike, welcome to the show. Unmute yourself, and 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 you have Professor Biwo with us. You can ask him a question. I Ike, can you? Myself, okay, I did it already. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You can ask your question. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, yeah. I happen to be in the beautiful island of Bonaire, but it's under the Dutch royal kingdom. I'm not in Netherlands, but I live in the island of Bonaire. Hmm. Okay. I am very close to you, Dr. Damage, more than Holland. To, 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 to Miami is two hours. Oh, and to, oh, Holland, I didn't know and that. to Holland is nine hours or ten hours. So, wow. okay. we are neighbors, okay? Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just came back from the church. I just want to get the lowdown of what is being discussed so that I don't just fall into um I don't just fall into unnecessary discussion. I don't know what was if you can okay. give me okay, all right, that's that's good enough. Uh CM, do you have another question for, for Obi? -Wan? Okay, CM cannot hear me. OC, do you have another question? Okay, OC, OC, you are you're muted. Uh, sorry, oh, sorry, didn't hear you. Go ahead. Okay, okay, go ahead. Yeah, so just uh, in line with uh, what Prof talked about, you know, what is happening, the, the question asked about what is happening in Enugu now. Enugu is my home state. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Yeah, we can hear you. We can hear yeah, you. Go so ahead. Enugu is my home state. So, you know, I tend to get a little bit emotional when I hear about what is going on at this point in time. And, uh, you know the 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 most horrific thing about the whole thing is the idea that we know what the problem is you know um is either that we are not willing to solve the problem or that what we don't we don't have what it takes to face it head on and i say that you know being very careful here um a friend of mine the the brother got kidnapped not too long ago you guys must have heard about the Nsuka, the the enugu Nsuka road now passing through which is like a death trap you know because you know every day the spirit of kidnapping there is just out of this world so the the brother got kidnapped and at the end of the negotiations they settled for five million and uh the the son to the kidnapped victim, when he, he was actually directed to a hotel in Enugu, 
to make the ransom payment. And when he got to the hotel, and this is directly from, you know, family, of course, I'm not going to mention a name. When he got to the hotel, he found out that, you know, it was like somebody set up a shop there with many customers around <laughs> because everybody were, they, they were all paying the ransoms and the money, they weren't even in a hurry. They would sit down, calculate the whole thing, count the money. And then after that, they will make a call and the kidnap victim gets released. I mean, this is supposed, this is happening in Enugu in a hotel. Now you tell me, are we trying to pretend that we don't know what that hotel, that somebody, we don't know who owns that hotel. And we don't know that in the hotel's manifest, we'll be able to see who checked in into that room and paid for that room. Yeah. You know, so, so, so what's, what's, so what's, the, what's, what's the problem here? You know, so again, it's either that we just don't have the political will to tackle it, or we feel like this is so overwhelming. You know, now, the, the, the words in the street is that there's a big connivance with the security apparatus in Enugu, which, you know, to the governor's, uh, you know, uh, it's not, it's under the control of the federal government. You have the 82 Division of the Nigerian Army, then you have the police there the police hierarchy, all of them are not under the control of the governor, you know? So these things are, I don't think it's an isolated incident. What we have, Niger somebody said that Nigeria is a vast crime scene. I, I think that's a very, very uh, yeah. good descri de description of it because just like we, just like the, the, the uh, just like uh, the, uh, we talked about 400 uh, sponsor for Boko Haram that were identified and even today nothing was done about it. All these high profile kidnapping, banditry and all those things, they go on and on and on. We pay a ransom and yet we haven't seen any concerted effort to actually address the situation. You know, so then when you throw in the lackadaisical attitude of the Southeast leadership made up of the governors, I can tell you that they're not really, they, they, you know, they position as if they are not really interested in doing the job for which they were elected to do. They are more interested in gaining more political capital for the next dispensation. That is what is going on. So that even when they feel bitter within themselves, they always feel like there's always that being very circumspect in the sense of we don't know what we'll do. And then it would tick off Abuja, and then we might, be able, we might not be able to proceed, you know, to you know, to 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 gain more political foothold. So again, that is, the, the, I think, the central thing is just what I say we, is part of it is that we lack the political will to do what is needed, and the other one is some of some some of those problems is not what we can address because again, the security apparatus lies with the federal government of Nigeria at this point. You know, and uh, I can go on and on and on, but I mean, I don't want to take so much time. But one, one quick point I also want to make. One big problem in Igbo land, which we've all, we can all agree to is, you know, our people are not politically sophisticated, you know? And I don't say that lightly, you know? I mean, we talk about the famed Igbo enterprise and all those kind of stuff, but you are talking about the fact that in your book that, you know, most of the people that, really made headway politically are those who were born in the North. I think there's a reason to that. Because the real truth is that the Northerners are politically more sophisticated, more aware than we are in Igbo land. You know, there's always the, 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 the notion that what is happening in the public does not belong. I'm not the one who's supposed to solve the problem. You know, it, it's, there's a sense of detachment in the collective, you know, and that has been the problem the Igbo men. Because no matter how bad a situation, if you look, if 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 you have to go around Nigeria, you find out why we have the worst leadership. Because where Ipo, for example, is talking about what is going on in Nigeria and how the Igbos are marginalized, but the Abia state has the worst political leadership. Why are we not taking on the low-hanging fruits before we talk about the big, the, the, the other bigger project? There are things that we can actually do. But anyway, let me not, uh, because I can go the whole day, but I'll stop for now. Thank you. All right, all right. Thank you. Thank you, Osi. So, so yeah, before we uh, come back to your blessing, what do you think about what Dr. Osi is saying, which is that um, we don't have, um, of course, it's difficult to point at 
credible media uh, paying attention to the Southeast other than OC just started uh, Ikenga online. But there, there are no media covering the Southeast. How do you hold political leaders in the Southeast accountable when when there is no media and credible opposition? Go ahead, Obi. Well, I would like to respond to OC's last point, which is that uh, Ibo was born in Northern Nigeria. He was born in Northern Nigeria, like uh, Nnamdi Azikiwe, like Ojuku. One thing you will understand, why they are making their political impact they are making, or they were making in Nigeria, was that I think children, either children who were born to their father's last, or children who were whose mothers were not well married or children who are angry with their fathers. Those are children that actually are representative, representative of the father, of the family. In Among all Igbos, if you look at Nam Dazigiwe, he was angry with, with his father. The father had just divorced the mother and he broke away from the father. He told her way and was rescued by the father in Ghana before he went to. The father collected money to send him to America. Ojuku was it, the father, the mother's only son. And the father did not marry his mother rightfully when he, the mother was pregnant with him. So when you look at all these children, you find things that make them had that make them successful the way they were unlike those who were born who were, who were born in the in the east whose mothers were legitimate wives of their fathers and uh, i think that was the reason for their success although i'm saying this verbally now i didn't go to explore it in my book but i was thinking why was Igbo's born in northern Nigeria successful and I looked at some of them and I saw that this is what is going on. Uh, in other words, they were the rebellious sons of their fathers. That okay. was what made them uh, successful. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Uh, bless you. You want to say, say, some, say something or should I go to Ike? Sorry, I'll just repeat because it's getting dark here and the lights are not back yet. Mm, okay. Can you uh, hear me? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's getting... So I I wanted to say something about what the Baba in the video was saying about people with half education being yeah. dangerous. Some time ago, there was this tag that uh, followed a um, certain group of Igbos that spoke about happenings in Igbo land. They were tagged intellectuals. <laughs> they were attacked with the lecture. So whenever you come out and say something in defense of um um I'm being careful with my words these days. Whenever you come out and say something in defense of anybody that is not a certain group of people, you were attacked with the lecture. Now I want to say this that um you see what Soludo is doing, he and some other Southeast governors, people like Umani, what they are doing is giving credence to that intellectual attack. When he won, a lot of people genuinely had good, had high hopes for him. Now he has thought of giving credence to that. Ah, is it not these people that are speaking supre supre? What did you expect from them? They do not have a grasp of things. All they do is speak English. That was the intellectual attack, and he's giving credence to it. And in the long run, it's going to backfire. We are going to get to a point where if you are, if you articulate. If you are assertive and if you're educated, the average um, Igbo voter might not take you serious. Because look, they'll be like, ah, what of the ones we gave um, our votes, what did he do? He spoke English with it. And when one of our own came out, he used his English and his pen to try to bring him down. That is what I wanted to say. Wow. OK. <laughs> I, I, never th I never thought about that. OK, Obi, <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> uh... This came from the left field. I never th thought about it that way. 
but I understand the point she's trying to make. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, so if if Soludo should fail, it will it will be a, a disaster for people like you, Obi. -Wu. Actually, well? I'm trying to. Actually, later, later today, I will call a friend of mine who praised Soludo a lot because Soludo was his teacher at the uh, University of Nigeria. Yeah. Okay. I w I'm trying to call him. I would now call him to ask him what he said about Soludo. Soludo, because from everything I'm reading about Soludo from uh, Ngozo Kunjiwala, from uh, Ezekwesele, from uh, different people. All of them have a theory about Soludo's character. And uh, I think that is, I wasn't told about this at the beginning. So Soludo is, is suspect to me now. I want to ask the guy whether what he said about Soludo was all true or whether there was something he kept from me. You know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Ike, are you ready? Oh no. I can, I can, if you're not, we can go out and I have a, I have a video. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I, okay. Unmute yourself, Ike. You can hear me now? Yes. Okay, yeah. Okay. I, I was listening a bit when the professor was talking about the people that was He gave an example of a joke. Ike, Ike, hold on. Can you turn down the, there is noise around you, maybe. Sorry, let me turn it up. It's my wife in the kitchen. You can't allow me to do something. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the wife in the kitchen. At least she's not in the other room, you know. Um... <laughs> All right. So uh, while we wait for Ike to come back. She came um... out of the other room to start bullying <laughs> <laughs> okay, like okay, right? guy. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah, you know, I have to allow her to enjoy her her fun while in the kitchen, right? Yeah, of course, of course. Or the food will not taste nice. Yes. Um, <laughs> the question I well, I had the professor when he was talking about uh, giving an example of Ujuku and Zeke, why they have, uh, why they are politically matured, will I say, like the people of the North. So my question to the professor is, uh, is it the only two people that were born in the North, the Zeke and um, Ojuku? And my question is, the rest Igbo that are born in the East, does it mean they don't have the political clout or they don't have the political know-how to be able to manage uh, or to be able to stand out like what an, we the Igbos expect a lot of our politicians to be. No, no. Yeah, I, you see, you join the conversation in the middle. Yeah. Uh, Kaduna Zogu was born in the north, as you know. In other words, those who are born in the north, there are many of them. They are successful in politics or in whatever profession they, are put, they put their hand because their upbringing is different from those who are born in Igbo land. They, they have a, a different expectation. We have a different expectation of them. And they were at war with their fathers. That's what I'm, I'm saying. This is mere speculation now. Uh, because I was wondering why they were so successful in politics. And that's what okay. I can come up with. <laughs> Okay. All right. Uh, CM, do you, do you have a follow-up question? CM. Okay. CM, I don't think. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Um, can you hear me? Please? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you. Yes, Go ahead, can hear you. Can you? Okay. I can hear you. Uh, as a writer as a writer maybe organizing a workshop so so i'm asking oh, do you have have you thought about uh, the idea of uh, organizing a yearly workshop for 
that you mentor them? Well, I, okay. I that will be sort of a, how to pay back to the some <laughs> All right, CM, CM. CM, we can't hear you. Can you can you log back log out and log back? CM is it's a problem this year internet. Okay. Um I think what he, what CM was saying, Obiwo, is that uh can you have you thought about organizing a workshop for, for writers at, at home and uh, I, I believe at home to, to help give back to society. Uh, I believe Tim Amanda is doing that in Nigeria. Uh, I have thought about it, but I believe Tim Amanda is doing well. Uh, I don't know. I don't know to what successful end I can organize such a thing in Nigeria. I'm willing to organize it anytime to start organizing it, so to speak. I think I will begin by uh, leave from next year. Uh, but it's not something I, I feel freely inclined to do. I have many, many books I want to write. And I think, in fact, I have many manuscripts now. The thing is to give some of them out. I haven't given them out. So, uh, I guess I, I will do it one of these days. You know, I'll start doing it. I don't know why Chima Amanda stopped. Uh, has, has she stopped? Or something like that? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how what is going on with that. But but I, what I know is that I know a little bit about her, her workshop. I know that um, a lot of people apply every year. And she takes only few, and that's that's all she could do. So there's room for more. It's not it's not enough. What she's doing is not enough. When you think about the amount of people who are number of people who are interested in 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 going to those workshops, I think the problem is always a sponsorship, because it's not it's not easy to do. Uh, but but I think one of the ways that it could be done these days is with the Zoom and all these online um, systems we have. You don't have to physically meet in one place, although it's better if everybody's in one room and people um, are lodge in the same place, you know. So, so part of it is CM. I mean, if you're interested and you have um, you have friends who are rich and they are going to pay for for it, <laughs> I can get you. I can get you writers that we do the workshop. I think, I think I think the problem is really about about sponsor, sponsorship. You know, not that writers are not willing to give back in that way. Uh, go ahead, Osi. Uh, yeah, hold on, let's see. Yeah, muted. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. It's better now? Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah I, I think CM asked a very uh, good question. Um, Prof, I am sure you've been doing tons of things, and we all have, you know, in one way or the other, trying to make the little dis difference that we can within the time we're here. Um, when I say that, the ebos that we are lacking in a lot a whole lot of indices i mean if you if you were to you know uh take a survey to determine uh you know people who uh who at least in this in this present nigeria people with uh you know the best standard of living i think ebos might actually come out tops you know thanks to our industry and all those kind of stuff but yeah. that is where the story the good story ends Politically and otherwise, we are very, very lagging behind. Take, for instance, what uh, uh, Rudolph talked about, you know, telling the Igbo stories. In the North, you have, like, what, the Daily Straws, you have the leadership, we have all this in the Southwest. Of course, we know the popular Lagos Ibado Prof. What do we have in Igbo land? Nothing. And it was that niche that, you know, we were trying to fill when we created the, the Iking. Because there's just not people telling the Igbo stories. And you agree with me that there's a difference when somebody from the Southwest talks about what is happening in Igbo land, you know? Expectedly, there's going to be some bias. Part of it is not intentional. It's because they can't connect all the dots. They're not from the area. You know, so what I'm trying to say in essence is that even though we're doing much, but I think we need to do more in terms of public enlightenment, in terms of coming together as a force 
to affect change. Uh, what do I mean by that? Like we have the king. We talked about, I'm sorry, I, I hope I'm not sounding very advertorial, but somebody like you and a whole lot of others would be like, you guys could be contributing articles. We're actually trying to launch what we call the King Literary Series, you know, which is the whole point is trying to bring the intellectuals, not the intellectuals, <laughs> <you know>, together. <laughs> together so we can, we can start to address all these fundamental issues. What is happening now, today, is that Igbo think tank is from coming from Ariaria and uh, main market on Asia. That, that's the unfortunate things. You know, why? Because the intellectuals, maybe out of convenience or out of being afraid, are taking the back seat. So we'll have a situation whereby those who should keep quiet and need to keep quiet are not. Now, those who should talk are the ones who are mute. We have to turn things around by being more engaged. You know, by networking within ourselves as Igbos who, you know, we feel that, okay, we know better, we should do better, our society should do better. That's the only way we, I think, we can make this difference. You know, there's, we're not going to be expecting people from the north, just, you know, from the southwest to come and do things. I was in a, a, I was in a conference at the Wallace Shrinka Center for Investigative Journalism. It's a CCSO conference. I was the only one from the Southeast in a room full of more than 30 people. And then we think that we are the cream de la cream of the society. The others don't. So all these things have to change, I think. You know, so that's that's why I agree with him that, you know, we 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 yes, of course, book is book is very, very important. And I'm glad I get to, you know, hear some of the works you do. But let us think about out of the camera how we can network and you know, effectively address some of these fundamental challenges that our society needs. Thank you. Uh, All right. Let me go ahead, Obi. Let me tell you something. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, being Igbos to organize things like what you are saying is not easy. I hope you are Ikenga will succeed. And I hope the Igbos you are working with don't disappoint you. In my 20s and 30s, I was very pragmatic. Uh, but there are friends, Igbo friends, who will disappoint you in whatever you plan with them. That you decide to lay back and not work on anything anymore. Some of their names, you have mentioned them here now. You know, they are aggressive. They are backbiting. You can't work with them. Uh, I'm Obi-Wu, and uh, some of you know me. I would rather Actually, if I want to organize something like a book launch, a, a book workshop, I can organize it even by myself, personally, now. Uh, but you look at it, you have planned it in the past with some people and they're disappointed. And some of them are not easy to work with and not friends, as you know. Some of them are in the U.S. I brought them here. And some of them are li live here. And we are friends. But those things don't work, uh, don't work well at the end. I just hope your own group works well. You can get thing. <laughs> but it, it didn't work well for me. <laughs> you know. And uh, I I don't look forward to a workshop, except I decide to go on it tomorrow. Uh, that's what I have to say. <laughs> I, I have a question from... Go ahead, go ahead, Ike. Yes. Go ahead. I want to ask the pro from the what uh, submission of Brother Oshi in the first beginning, when he talked about... Uh, some of the political elite or politicians you have in the East, 
At the beginning, they will tell you this is who they are. By the time they're able to get to power, they become monsters and became something you cannot even des describe. And they begin to work against the same evil people, their own people, who help them to be go into power. He gave an example of David Umayi in, in, in a Bonny state, Uguanyi in Enugu state, even though he doesn't talk, but he's a monster too. You talk about the, uh, um, the, the governor in Abia state, that one is, is a devil incarnate. <laughs> and, they, and they talk about uh, the governor of Imo State. That one is that I don't know what I'm going to use to describe him. You know. So is our Supreme Court governor? Uh, uh, Supreme Court governor, you know. So uh, the writers, you people who are in the professional line of writing and you know, and writing issues that affects the people. What 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 changed? What what is the reason why? They automatically change when they get to that power that they begin to now try to build an empire for themselves and their family and their friends and forget the people only remember the people after four years when they want to come back to seek election so as writers and professionals what what what, what is the way forward because i think this is one of the greatest danger in evil political development because when we put our hope and trust on somebody in a matter of few few months, you begin to see a different person. Example of Professor Salud of yesterday. <laughs> I mean, this is this, it is shocking, you know, because I mean, the, uh, this this is where sometimes I, I I don't know how to start because um, Soludo, for example, I know very well that during the time he was CBN governor, it was some of eminent evils that made him to become CBN without any. Without any, uh, without anything, they worked on Basanjo and made it possible for him to become CBN governor. Okonji Wala, Professor Patin Naji. These are some eminent evil people who went to Basanjo direct and say, "Hey, this is this our son. This is who we want to be CBN governor." There were so many people who are lining up for to become CBN governor, but it is his kinsmen who did that for him. But look at Salud of yesterday. Not even up to six months as governor of Anambra State, he has turned himself into a god in trying to, you know, dictate the pace of what is going on in Anambra State. So, what is the way forward? You see, these are these Igbos. You pray that they succeed in whatever they are looking for. All the governors in Igbo land today have hijacked politics. They are no longer like Obi. They are not even like a, 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 the immediate past governor of Anambra who are looking for himself. These are killers who are all, the, all of them who are there today. Let them find what they are looking for. <laughs> they will not last, last long. They will not get to, to the presidency. So Ludo thinks he will do what he, he wants and become a president before Obi. He will not get there. And he has to serve his masters. The one in Imo State has to serve his masters. He also wants to become a senator now. In fact, let them find what they are looking for. That's what I pray. <laughs> uh, All right. Peter Obi Go ahead. Says, we pray for him to let Peter be find what he's looking for. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, Ndubisi, welcome to the show. Ndubisi, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, so we're here with Professor Biwo. Um, yeah, welcome to the show. We're here with Professor Biwo. If you have any questions, thank you. Him, um, you can you can ask him. Okay. I I just came back from uh, mass. I joined briefly before I went to the church. So, Prof, we're happy okay. to see you. Happy to see you too. Um, yeah, I am. My concern is about our Igbo political um, elites, but like those those holding uh, elective offices. Uh, at least from from my own observation, growing up, I saw what the 
the governors in the Second Republic, at least those ones I was a little bit aware of what was going on then. I saw that they did some level of developments before the Second Republic was uh, truncated by the military. But since 1999, when uh, we returned effectively to uh, civilian rule, most of the most of those in governance have been they have been below par. Most of them have been very very below par. Like the last week I uh, spoke, you saw you see how they are doing in their states. They are not playing God, and uh, they seem not to be too interested in the development of the their states and their and and even the people. They they want to dictate where who who comes up or who is developed. They want to just be an institution on, on, onto themselves. And I don't think that is the that is what, what we what we know as the Igbo tradition of trying to be there for each other and the, that our republican nation. So I don't know what do you think will be this uh, should be the solution. Uh, what, what do you think the people should be thinking or how, how to regalvanize the people to think to to think back on uh, on the usual Igbo way of doing things of uh, developing total development of a man and their community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the the one person all of us are praying for today to succeed is Peter Obi. Uh, he's he has remember he has been a governor for eight years. He worked like Mbakwe. He worked like Jim Webodo. He has done his part and left. All the governors who are there today, all of them are hijackers. We pray that Obi will succeed as president. At least in his position as president, he might help some of them who are governors to succeed. These people who are governors today, we can't even hope for anything from them. We can pray for them to succeed, you know, but they can't. You can't. They can't achieve anything, and you can't look on, up to them for any anything, because that's who they are. Even among ourselves, the, the educated ones. Remember, there was a time, govern, governors were were educated Americans who are going from America back home to contest for governor. These days, if you go for any position as an American, they want to eat your money. Uh, so these people will serve their time and pass on, and other people will, will come again. We hope we get better governors in the future. As All right. Be. Mm -hmm. mm. All right, thank you. Let me uh, bring in uh, Mr. Murray. Murray, welcome to the show. Thank you, Dr. Damages, for having me. It's always a delight to be here. Yeah, it's nice to have you again. So we have uh, Professor Biwo here. Uh, you have any question, comments uh, for him? Yeah, actually, I just joined the show. I didn't listen to him for his submission earlier. I uh, just want to use the opportunity to thank you, first of all, uh, Dr. Damages, for the good job you're doing, for choosing to be different. And uh, through this, your platform, you have profound solution to my so many why questions. Why this? Why that? I have come to realization that uh, we blame our politicians. Politicians are not helping matters, but we as a people, we are the problem of ourselves. Uh, you do this your platform. I've been able to discover how the average Nigerian thinks about the country Nigeria. If we continue the way we are going, the blame game will continue unabated. It will continue, uh, you know, indefinitely. Because every person clamoring to be there or blaming the person that is already there is only looking for opportunity to get his share. No commitment, no sense of patriotism to the nation of Nigeria. Everybody comes to this show, try to demonstrate uh, emotions, you know, one way or the other, which is okay. But then I've come to realize through this your show, especially the one you did, who is ready to die for Nigeria? Nobody's ready to die for Nigeria. And once again, I say, like I said the other week, if nobody, if the bad Nigeria we have, well, that's one mistake we are all making. 
Nigeria is not the bad, it's not the leader that is currently there. It's not, it's not Buhari. Nigeria is more than any person. Every leader will come and go, but Nigeria remains as a nation. Buhari will come and go, will commit his atrocities, his tribalism, the religious back country and leave. Nigeria remains. Nobody is committed, no sense of patriotism in, any, in most of us. I don't want to say in all of us. So if the part Nigeria we have today is not worth dying for, we are not worthy of a better Nigeria. This is my humble submission. And uh, for the prof, uh, among this, uh, OP, among this, uh, among the two notorious uh, criminals, Atiko and uh, Tinubu, OP seems to be, you know, the better candidate. He beats me, he beats my imagination, he beats me hollow. As to why the greatest opposition is coming from his own uh, base, when every other person is clamoring for a president okay. of Igbo extraction, I don't know what is responsible for this. And this was, it's not just starting to it happen to equipment, it's been on for a very long time. What are you people doing to put your house in order? I'm not saying your house is divided, though. But you guys need to do more from what I'm seeing. Uh, that is my humble commission. Thank you. Thank you. Very thank, much. You, thank you. Thank yeah, you. Now, Obi, we'll go ahead. <laughs> what are you well, doing to put the house of the East in order? When the equipment was there, at least those who were championing against him were also Igbos. That was time Ibo, the house was divided. Equipment, uh, Mbakwe will, will go to him crying. And he'll be forced to give Mbakwe whatever he wanted, even though he's in a different party. You know? Uh, today, they, they, they belong to different parties. But they are, in fact, they are, people don't even know who they are. They just come in either from Supreme Court or from Lagos. You know? We don't know who these people are. That is the truth. And now, we allow them to be. We allow yeah. them to be governors. You know, whenever they finish their turn, they will go back to, Le to Lagos <laughs> because they will not be in Nimbo State. We are hoping for any day people like Peter B will come back to be governors and be presidents. That's what we are ho hoping for. Uh, that's all. So, so someone, uh, Obi, was someone mentioned uh, some time ago that... Um, there's no political leader in the in the southeast that are that the big names that are behind Peter B. Are you are you concerned about that? There is no governor of any state. There is no senator. There is nobody. There's How nobody. Is, there's nobody. Yeah. There's no, there's so no so so if if the governors if they have a, a way to um, control the outcome of the election, which they used to do, we hope that they will, may not be able to do that. Yeah, that they may actually work against him even in the east they work against him they work against him in fact Iwana is sounding like a good name today because it's, it's the one remaining the, the people who came with him have all gone you know <laughs> Iwana was not a good name when they were when other people were around you know Iwana with the chief Iwana yeah yeah, yeah Adel and know. Nick, mm. you know uh Obi is alone, except the, uh, uh, the former governor of Anambra State, we, uh, uh, Ezefiel or something like that. You know, Obi is alone, and uh, we don't have much hope for Igbo leadership from Igbo land to come out. But, to... but I want you to analyze this. How do you think he's going to this election is going to play out? So. So you have the presidential election with the, the National Assembly, um, and then you have the governorship election. Where the governors tell the people during the presidential election to vote for, you know, like the guys from APC or PDP, what are they going to do? How are they going to, how are the people going to differentiate? How are they going to, are they going to vote, uh, how did Buhari say it, up and down the, the, uh, the <laughs> how, how is it going to happen? I don't know. No, I hope that obese candidates will have a, a way to become governor. <laughs> obese candidates will, will form the structure this time. Uh, do, but, you do you think uh, Labour, I don't think Labour has candidates in uh, most of the states. No, I don't in, even in, in Imo State, 
there are two candidates I know who are personal friends. One okay. from my village, and I came from Obo. And I think the one from my village will get it. In fact, I hope some of them will be won by obese candidates. Then the structure will, will now, not structure of criminality they ha as they have now. Uh, and I hope Obi himself succeeds. Obi will get three or four regions. You know, I believe he'll get south south, he'll get southeast, he'll get, he'll get middle belt, you know, uh, not central, as you say. And then maybe he will share the vote in northeast. Not west, he may get 25%. I just hope we'll be, we succeed. But all okay. that, as, let, as governors, you know, is here and there. Mm -hmm. Let me let me play this video and get your reaction. I know you lived in Joss and uh, you understand the middle belt. It may be... Right now, right now, we are all sitting ducks. These people are armed to the teeth with all the weapons of mass destruction and we don't have them. But we have the numbers and the land belongs to us. <laughs> they are trying to recolonize us and take over our land. <laughs> Can I allow oh, you to that. defend yourselves? <laughs> yeah, Your Majesty, you heard what they said. You must then unite our people. A lot of the attacks that I got was from our people. They said, I, I told them to defend themselves. I didn't give them arms. I will not give you arms. Find out why, how these people who have it got it. Use the same means, use the same means to defend you. <laughs> All right, T.Y. Danjuma. You lived in Juma. You, you lived in, you lived in just so you understand uh, the thinking in the middle, middle, middle belt. What is your take on, on his politics of recent? T.Y. Danjuma. You know, the man was, he was the one who killed Agui Rossi. He was the one who was playing anti Igbo when he was in power. But today, the House of Fulanese he's fighting for are today killing his people. Uh, I just hope Igbos will let him and his people fight their wars. Igbos are not in a position to save him this time around. Whenever they finish fighting, we will see how, how well they have fought. You know, he's talking like, uh, in fact, you you will even think he's uh, Tinubu, the way he's, he's rapping his la language. But Igbos are not fighting for anybody these days. And Igbos are not in a position to fight for anybody these days. Let's uh, Uh, let him fight his war. That's all I can say. But but do you feel that what he's dealing with is the same thing that uh, people are dealing with in any war? And uh, it's, it's the same issue, is it not? It's the same issue. Ibo, if Igbo know how to care for themselves, they should face their headache. Let him face his own in the, in the north. That's yeah, but I'm, I'm trying to say that he's doing something. At least he's saying something. Nobody's coming out to say anything about what's going on in any war. Just like I was saying, look at how a brother said somebody went to a hotel 
and on going there, he saw other people. They were all relaxed. If you bring your money, it will be counted. And then they will call somebody to let go your your family member. The killing, the kidnappings in the East, both in Enugu and uh, in Abia State. This is not done. It's, 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 it's not done at, at any mysterious level. We know who they are. We know where they are. We know who is collecting the money. The military is involved in it. The officials are involved in it. Peter B said it. You cannot steal Nigeria's oil without go those government knowing about it. They know who is doing these things. You know, any day a president goes in there, that is for the people. He will solve these problems overnight. You know, that's what uh, I'm saying. All right. All right. Thank you. Uh, Dozier, welcome to the show. Thank you. All right. You have a question for uh, Professor Biwu or comment. You can go ahead. Um, I think the first one I was talking about has to do with um, libraries. Two years ago, Chimamanda went to France and the person asked her whether there are bookshops and libraries in Nigeria. I think most precisely it was about bookshops or library, either one. And she was uh, livid and she... You could see that on YouTube. She 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 didn't take it lightly, and she says, said so many things about the French colonialism and the underrating of the Africans and the black people, etc. But come to look at it more pragmatically, you notice that the libraries that existed when I was in Nigeria in the eighties are nowhere to be found. There is, no there is no local government that can tell you they have libraries now. There are perhaps the places you will find libraries will be in the university settings. Still, when you go to those universities and look at the quality of libraries they have, it's, it's mm, I don't want to use I don't want to insult nonsense. Uh, my point is there are no libraries for the kids to actually sit down and read a book. And um, I know that we tend to, we've, we talk about politics quite often, and we tend to generalize the problems of Nigeria as a central, a federal problem. But come down to the local government level, or the state level, you when you hear the amount of millions, I'm talking about millions in dollars, you wonder what they are used for. It's pathetic. So the point of the library is so obvious that there are really no libraries. Let's assume a young man with a very serious passion about literature in a high school or in a university, wants to explore on the materials around them. <laughs> if he doesn't have internet, perhaps he may not even know what that means. That is not how the 80s and the 90s used to be. So I haven't left that, um, said that. Um, going to the Igbos and politics as you guys were talking, that it is true that it's pathetic how Nigeria has become, what Nigeria has become, but I don't know how somebody can easily siphon ten billion dollars. I'm saying dollars, I'm not saying the 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 Olubu money. I'm saying dollars, and nobody asks a question. A society like this cannot continue. 
if if that is how society i'm talking about reference to wiki and the money that he was talking about that uh, the 13 percent derivation from 1999 and you look at what delta got you look at what rivers got emo state got about i don't know five to ten thousand ten billion dollars you could, nobody is there to count for anything in other words we are the mercy of the governors as to what they want to give us. If they don't want to give you anything, they go with it. And nobody is there to ask them a question. One of the abominations in Nigerian governance is immunity from persecution. From top to bottom, as my, my man will say. Immunity from persecution. If we are imitating the United States, I will now refer to the United States. There is no way a governor can run away in this country from Maine to California. There is no way you will run away with $100,000. Talk about one million. But you talk about people with billions of dollars, the green paper, running away with it. And nobody... Even the weak kid that is talking about it that looks at the manias, he is not. The truth is, before he even started governance, he had a private jet to Spain. And the rest of the things that were in the private jet are secret. And the last time he came back from Spain and started distributing money, I don't know where the money came from. The point is this. Whether I don't believe in the, the B word, Biafra, I'm sorry. I am so evil as evil comes. But the truth is, if we have to have a society, we cannot have a society where people just are unaccountable. They are, I mean, people are the, 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 societies are their mercy. They decide what they give you. They decide even when they have to pay and how they pay for 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 for, for salaries or for pensions or for anything. We cannot, even if it has nothing to do with the federal government. What about the Igbos? When we talk about Igbo, Igbo, we have Igbo governors and we have no power absolutely to get them to account for anything. It's sad, pathetic. We are we are the solid states. Thank All you. right, thank you. Thank you, Jose. Um, oh. Obi, will you have a comment? What you said is very clear. I don't have a comment. What you said is self explanatory. Okay. And, uh, yeah. All right, let's go to YM Brima uh, by B B B Brima. Yeah, I can pronounce it. So, help me. Unmute yourself, please. Yeah, it's Birma, actually. Birma. OK. All right. Welcome to the show. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so are much. You, where, are you joining, where are you joining us from? It looks like yeah, a desert behind you. I'm Estonia. Estonia, wow. Estonia, okay. wow. Yeah. yeah. We're everywhere. So if, if, if my exactly plane lands everywhere. in Estonia, Estonia <laughs> by accident, I will, I will have you there, too. Say hi to me. No <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. Go ahead. We're talking to Obi. Obi was uh, our guest. Well, today. actually, I'm just joining. So I didn't okay. follow the, the, the what you guys are discussing about. So probably I would just be hanging around. He's a, he's a professor of world literature. So he can answer anything about the world, about literature, and you know any question you have. <laughs> Oh, okay. All right. Maybe so be, to talk. Maybe yeah. No, I'm, I'm no. I'll come. I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you. I'll yeah. come back to you. So, so be. Let, let's uh, oh, go ahead. I, I go ahead. I unmute yourself. No. All right. Go ahead. Okay. Um. While I was trying to step away, um. Somebody was talking about, uh, if I can vividly remember, yeah. We talked about, we're talking about the governors. Uh, yeah, we were talking about um, 
or be without structure or, or be without you know political elite in the eastern nigeria supporting him yes and the professor said that automatically that uh, they're going to work against him and uh, for me personally i know and i believe it deeply in my heart they're going to work against him <coughs> it's, not, it's not hidden it's not something somebody will say uh -uh, nah, nah, wow. It's something we, every Igbo man or every Nigerian who is wishing for a new Nigeria should know that they're going to work against this man. Because um, we know that it is the same structures, the same criminality, the same criminal structure that will be is promising Nigerians he want to rid of. It's not going to be an easy fight. That is completely clear. That the Igbos, some of them, they are, they are doing it already. It's not that so, the, the, the so-called uh, the governors in the eastern Nigeria, they're already doing it already. And some who claim to be political elite in, in Igbo land, you know, they are doing it already. That even Labour Party cannot campaign in the East freely. How else do you talk about free and fair election if the political party cannot be, you know, given the privilege and opportunity to go and seek for vote through their programs. They're already doing it in the East with the Labour Party. Ebony State is, is no go area right now. Abia State, you saw, you saw what happened when Peter B went Abia to flag off the governorship campaign of Dr. Oti. They, they, he wasn't giving anything. They, they, they denied him everything, but eventually they got a school or somewhere. You know, so listen, every Igbo man who is trying to think that it's going to be in the easy for or be in the east no it's not going to be easy because those people that are doing this they know why they are fighting him because they know that if eventually if god's will that will be becomes president they know that their story is closed they, they book their book and their story will come to an end i remember in 1979 when mbakwe came to power in imo state mbakwe like what professor was saying Mbakwe gave every local, every town in Imo State electricity in 1979 to 83. There is no town, there is no local government in Imo State during 79 that do not have electricity and pipe bomb water. Like what Professor was saying, I was following politics for a very long time. Mbakwe will go to Lagos and cry for equipment, just like what the Professor said. Mbakwe was getting everything he wanted from Shagari and the Kweme because he was a smart politician. He was able to achieve success. And he laid a foundation in Imo State, which the subsequent governors have completely destroyed. You know, so sincerely speaking, all of us that are living outside who are trying to see that the new Nigeria is possible. We all should oh no, make us our mind to know that OB is going to find it tough. But that should not stop us. But that should encourage every one of us, whatever we are doing, to see that this, this is possible. Because if I am doing my part in whatever way that I know I'm doing it, because I know that I need a new Nigeria. I said here before damage the other time, my kids and my grandkids can go to Nigeria. What joy do I have? That my children don't want to they don't even want to hear nigeria anymore they don't want to go back because they are enlightened like all of us here who know what is going on in our country and i will be the last father who will want to risk the life of my children and my grandkids my wife loved going my wife is not a nigerian he loved going to nigeria to eat ofu her open sarah and the rest of them but we can't go for years and I cannot because she wants to eat mm. offense and I want to risk my wife back in Nigeria. That's not possible. So the reality is this. No matter whatever we say here, no matter whatever we try to put as academic knowledge and academic solution, if we are not taking part and making sure that we are trying to do what we can do for a better and a new Nigeria, through Mr. Pitobi, then we will continue to cry because... Those elites are the people who they are our problems. They are the people who are they, they are the people who are kidnapping people. They are the people who are causing insecurity in the eastern state in order for to achieve their political gain. 
Okay. So please, I just Thank you, want Ike. to say that um, I just want to leave you guys because Madam is calling me. My lunch is ready, but I, I just want to thank the professor for being here with us. And thank you. I pray that God will continue to give you the strength and the grace to, you know, continue to do more and write more and enlighten the evils, you know, through your book, so that we, our children and our grandchildren, could be able to make a better living for themselves in Nigeria. God bless you, and I will join you later, Doctor Dame. Thank you. Th thank you, Ike. Thank you. Uh, I'll see. Go ahead. Uh, unmute yourself, Osi. Osi, unmute yourself. What? Okay, sorry. Yeah. I, I have to be reminded this time. Yeah, so I have another Zoom meeting to go on in the next few minutes. I just wanted to chime in my last thing. So, um, too, much, too many things to unpack, but uh, you, we, we're talking about, uh, you know, the what the governors and uh, the political elites not giving uh, P2B all the support. I mean, uh, for me personally, it's nothing surprising whatsoever, you know, because we know what the problem is, you know. Uh, one of the problem is, I think the most important of them in, is that P2B represents somebody who is coming to open the system, you know, where these folks are the major players and where they have a comparative advantage. So, you know, with the way he's going, with the way he, the nature of his person, you know, if Labour succeeds, then the politics in Nigeria is going to change, you know, the way we know it at, at this point. And those who are benefiting heavily from it, you know, the Saudis governors and their cohorts in all over the place, they're not going to be happy about it. You know, take my own state of Benugu, for example, where, you know, PDP is, is the king by default. I mean, if if, it, if if somebody wins the PDP primaries, it's automatically the candidate, you know, the winner of, you know. Uh, but with the entrance of labor, things are changing. That even the governorship candidate for uh, PDP now, he's, the labor is giving him a big run for his money. And then, so you see those folks who are propping him up, lashing out. So that, that, that's, that's, that's one of the biggest reasons. Then, of course, you have the other things about, you know, human nature and being jealous. You know, somebody, I think it was uh, Gore Vidal that says, when my friends die, I succeed, I die a little, you know? So, so it's, there's this issue of like, okay, it's Peter B, why not me? I've been in the system for too long. I've been sharing money and all those things. Obi is not any of those things. And yet, he came to represent this movement that we have in Nigeria. So there is that human jealousy part, which I think is part of, you know, besides the, the grand aspiration of Soludo, you know, to contest as the president sometimes now, you know, in the future, there's also that jealousy, you know, that is, you know, on the plane at the background. Now, the second point I wanted to make is, you know, what Prof said about uh, hopefully at some point we'll be able to get the kind of leaders, you know, we uh, to all as part of it. I'm just not as optimistic as him, you know. Um, there's the point they always make that, you know, every society get the kind of leadership they deserve. You're not going to raise a Jew in the in a field where you have all you have are Philistines, you know. And what 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 I'm trying to say in essence is, our system, you know, in Igbo land is what is popping all these things, you know, and. At the core of it is the civil society that is very docile, that is very dormant, that, you know, almost like they accept everything as an act of faith. You know, and well, and just trying to give you a call, right? in, in 1983, I mean, I was a young man at the time, and uh, one of the things I also remembered was the fact that, you know, in those states, Akino Moborio contested against, I believe it was Michael Ajassin. Omoboro yes. was in MPN. Michael Ajassin was the chosen one in the UPN, which is the predominant party. I was party then. Now, because of uh, Shagare and MPN had all the mo their muscles, their way, and Omoboro won. What happened? The whole place couldn't contain him because the, whole, the, the Southwest went banana, breaking up everything and, you know, I think they say that that was part of what precipitated the, the military combat. But when you contrast it to what happened in the, the old Anambra state then, mm -hmm. the was clearly, you know, the winner of that election. 
But because of Ekwemi's influence, being the vice president, they just turned the thing, and then it became CCO. No, what did our people do at the time? Nothing. You know. Uh, so, Osi, Osi, yeah. Osi, to support what you're saying, what about Imo State? The one they named <laughs> the fourth person as the the governor, the Supreme Court named the fourth. Exactly. Person. So, 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 <laughs> so you I, I, not yeah. not just that the people didn't do anything, but the <laughs> people in the state assembly. All of them moved to they moved to uh APC. Exactly. So 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 they could have at least the the list and and this is in most state that as far as I'm concerned is the most politically active in the southeast. A lot of knowledgeable people there. But still, I was expecting at least a good pocket of resistance marching on the street, not even violent, but marching on the street, organizing and doing things. But what did they say? They just label him Supreme Court governor, but that's where he ends. I can tell you that in Yoruba land, that may hardly be the case. You know, so if we do not, you know, the, the, for, for us to get a hold of the problem we face, you know, we have to do better. We have to actually energize the base. Tell them for them to understand what is actually the issue. Look, politicians are the same everywhere. Whether you call it America, whether you call it Israel, whether you call it in Nigeria, they're out there to extract that advantage. Better than hooks or crooks. We just Israel just uh, is having Dr. Ben, uh, Mr. Benjamin Netanyahu back. This is his fourth time. This is a guy who's facing charges for graft. Yes, <laughs> and he found a way to beat the system, you know, and came back. And look at what Trump is doing here in the U.S. You know, the same way. So what I'm trying to say is that there is no angel as politicians everywhere in the globe. What will make the difference is how if the people are willing and able to hold them to account. And still, we start raising a civil society in Igbo land who will say, oh, OK, it's not like that. You know, it's not like, oh, this is our chief and we're not going to. If we start doing, if we don't start doing that, and which starts with what, what I was trying to describe, uh, a prof how we get involved of course I, I I'm, I'm very familiar with what you mentioned when we, we were about to study king one one of the guys i knew him well known, patrick okibo is a friend of mine he said look <laughs> i'll remind you one thing my dad said i know i know and, patrick okibo okay and that what my dad said is when you're doing things for Igbo people or any don't expect that people will come out and praise you and do all those things because it's not going to come so if you're going to do this know that it's a tankless job and I knew that, and but he also re-emphasized re what I know, you know, which is the fact that, you know, we not you're always going to encounter resistance. You're always going to encounter those who will tell you. In fact, as a matter of fact, people tell me that we shouldn't even do it because it's dead on arrival. Who's going to sponsor it? How are we going to get it off the ground? But we just, you know, lived on faith basically. So what I'm saying is. Even though it's difficult, even though we get disappointments, even we, though we meet people that we feel like they're with us and they're against us, let our hope triumph over our experience. Because the alternative will continue to be this chaos. And when the time comes and you know, you're with your friends, wait from the southwest or somewhere else, and they're talking about the rot in Igbo land, none of us will be exempt. Because at the end of the day, the box stops on all our tables. Yeah, yes, thank sir. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you All so right. much. And I'll be going. All right. Thank you for All right. Okay. All right. Bye -bye. Thank, you. Thank you so much for Thank being you. here. All right. Bye bye. All right. Um, so we take a few more questions and then uh, we round up. Um, uh, Pajay, pa welcome to the show. <laughs> I like I like the way some people <laughs> will log on and um, you know they don't even you know they. But <laughs> you welcome. <laughs> but welcome to the show. Can you hear me, Paje? Yeah. Okay. Dr. You're Dr. on now. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm fine. Oh, thank you. Finally, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, you're here. So, thank so you. you have the you have the floor. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, my brother. I'll be following the show. I'm trying to come in so much. I'm in only Dr. WGC. I will go out and all that, but thank you. Uh, I enjoy everything you guys are saying, more especially uh, I'm so sad in what is happening in Enugu. That is where I was born, that is where I grew up. I'm from Adia State. So uh, I plan to travel this way. It's 
it is quite unfortunate. My cousins will call me and say, if I have 100 million, I should come back. If I don't have 100 million, I should stay back. <laughs> because they are, not, they are not ready to use the little money they are using for their businesses to contribute for my release. And it's quite unfortunate. This is, uh, Enugu is uh, uh, one of, the, when, when you come to the, uh, in Nigeria, it's a very cool city. But what is going on, what I see every day uh, is quite uh, unacceptable. And um, talking about COVID, I keep on every day I put up in my prayers. It's the only prayer that can save Nigeria. And uh, Nigeria to be saved is true. No other person for now. And um, uh, I keep on like one of my brothers was saying that uh, he goes uh, governor. Yeah. They are criminals. So if we become in all those, the way they loot money, will stop. And they don't want it. And they are, all of them are greedy. You can see what the kind of bags of money they are uh, showing people stored a lot of money in their houses, you know, because they change money. All this money are, you know, is nothing to go. We can't use the money at all. So it's quite unfortunate. And in Tennessee, I would like to go back to Nigeria one day. And I cannot take my, my family to Nigeria like one of my dad uh, said. I can't risk it. I can't, I can't risk it too. So thank you. That's all I can say for now. Thank all you. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. So, yeah. Obi, what do you have uh, <laughs> comments? Well, what he's saying is the same problem all of us have. Mm. I, I, in fact, you can't believe when I went to Nigeria last. <laughs> I went to Nigeria for my father's burial in 2014, 13, 14, and uh, I haven't gone to Nigeria again. And I'm going again this this winter. That's eight years I've been, I've been away from Nigeria. Imo State, we say it will not happen in Imo State, we, but we have seen a Supreme Court governor come there. We have seen him killing his people in Olu, Senatorial Zone. We have seen the kidnappings going on in Nimbo State. And now it's Enugu State. There was a time Anambra was booming with killings. So we we pray for all these things and, and we give glory to God. You know, we can't hope for any better. <laughs> or rather, we, we hope that Obi comes in. That's the only bright future we see. You now, let, let me ask you, what if what if he doesn't? Have you thought about that? What do you think will be exactly. the... Exactly. If he doesn't, he doesn't. <laughs> and what happens? Nothing. We, don't, we keep hoping for a better <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> he is... The main object we have at hand at this time. So we are praying for him. But if he doesn't come in, he doesn't come in. You know, although I think people will resist it. You know, luckily, Buhari has kept off all these things. So I'm hoping that you come in. It will not depend on Tinubu. It will not depend on article, you know. Wow. All right. Um. So so we're rounding up now. So I I, I checked. What I know, I got a copy of uh, your book. Um, it was of Northern Nigeria from you. Uh, but I I checked now. I couldn't find it on Amazon. What, what's what's going on? Where where are you, where are your books? <laughs> Why is it not on Amazon? Actually, a twenty fifth. Ceremony was supposed to bring out uh, a new edition of Igbos of North Nigeria this year because this year is the 25th anniversary of it. Uh, but I hope it will come out next year. You know, at some point, I wanted somebody to do it. There's somebody who's plotting to do it. At another time, I was wondering if I would do it myself. You know, but I have other texts I want to bring out in the interval. Mm. I hope it will come out next year. 
Yes, we, All right. Sorry, through the ambassador. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other question from anybody, any of our guests? Any, uh, uh, go ahead. Thank you, doctor. And, um, I'm not the question actually is, is uh, part of the worries we have about uh, the kind of politicians we have in the Southeast at the moment. Uh, it's like they have learned from other parts of the country where poverty has been weaponized and they are doing it very well down there. Our people are being um, so impoverished by bad policies and they're not using the money that, that the states the state get uh, from generated revenue and federal allocation to work for the people. So I, I know the governors, they are, they are all, um, they don't have characters and most of them are greedy, the present ones and some before them. And that is why they don't care at all. And um, they are resisting Obi because Obi is not like them. Obi is a different kind of politician. He has always maintained his uh, stand on the way governance is and that things should be done transparently. He has been a very transparent man. He has been in the, in the corporate world or private business. And he's, like I said sometime in the past, his business deals and his life is like an open book. Everybody knows it. That is why they cannot even pinpoint anything against him. If Obi was a typical politician, these other parties would have taken him to the cleaners with all, all kinds of revelations. Even people in his government, even people who work with him while he was governor, they will bring out some stuff. But there is nothing to show. The man is very clean. So if Nigerians uh, miss, he's not a saint, but he's somebody who I believe will, will work well to things around. He believes he has fear of God. That is the basic, that is the first thing. And he doesn't, he's not the everyday politician. He does things the right way. He wants to uh, provide justice for everybody. I was, recently I was with a man from Haiti. The man mentioned to me that he, he, in 2010, when Haiti had, uh, I think 2010 or years, some years uh, um, before then, or uh, um, after that, when they had an uh, earthquake, Obi was there. Obi was there to, support, to to provide support, and he gave them uh, some uh, financial and material support as well. This is a country that he has no affinity to, just because probably that just his human feeling. So I would, then coming back to our, our people, the way the governors are saying, "Oh, I'm, I'm in charge here. I will decide what happened in my state." Like a boy governor is saying, "I believe we all those, those of us who are a bit um, who know a little about how these things should be enlightenment." Who is it's our duty to enlighten our people and talk to those who are on the ground who are equally resisting those things to talk to people that let these let these governors now reroad you to voting ag against your conscience. Don't even accept right. their, their money. Just go on that day and vote the right person. Thank All right, you. Nubisi, thank you. Uh, let's let's just get a few thank people you. that are that are joining us so that we round up. Um Janaba, welcome to the show. It's Adoni from uh, in Nigeria. <laughs> yeah, Adeni Aden 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 is in Nigeria. I will get to him next. Um, okay, okay. Jonaba, hold on. Let, let me talk to Adeni. Now you are in Texas, so I know you don't have problem. Adeni, welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Damages. Okay. I Adeni? appreciate you. I appreciate thank you, guys. Yeah. And I want to thank appreciate uh, Prof also for the write up and uh, for the books. Yeah. You see, I everybody is concerned now about the problem. In Nigeria, everybody and uh, people are just profounding solutions. Here and there. Some are even asking, What is the solution? What is the solution? Just like uh, what some of the earlier speakers said, that uh, some of these governors, when they were asking for votes, they will come to you, they are approachable and everything. But the moment they get into office, they become emperor. Nobody can hear them. They lavish money the way they want and all those stuff. And uh, it's just the way everybody is lamenting about it. So the next election that I am praying that should not come up until when we restructure this country, until when we are able to change the system, I don't pray for the next election to come up because we will end up continue to make the same mistake. An average Nigerian wants power. And when you give him that power, it becomes uh, absolute. 
he will use that power to his own self-interest detriment to the national interest. So if we do not address the system that will limit the powers of these elected of officers, we are just deceiving yes. ourselves in Nigeria. I sympathize with uh, uh, Peter Obi. He seems to be the best among them. But he cannot do it alone. If you look at it now, he's having all these characters that have contributed to the destruction of Nigeria. They are all coming to join him now because they've seen that uh, he's gaining support and everywhere. These are the people now that will dent his government if he eventually wins. For example, those in the National Assembly, Peter Obi needs them if he wants to work. He needs the state governors. He needs all the state assemblies. But these are the people who are looking for their personal interest. And they will not want to go along with him because his uh, position will surely affect their own interests negatively. So, and that is why, uh, Dr. Ramages, I still want us to discuss this constitution that I've submitted to you. By next week, you now I'm giving the constitution to the National Assembly. I'm sending it to the government and I'm sending it to most important people in Nigeria. It's changing the system that we are currently running. It's devolving powers to the local government. It's a way that elections will be carried out without anybody spending money. It's a way of uh, ensuring that accountability is the watchword. So that is my own contribution to solving the Nigerian problem. But any other ones that we think we want to do by electing the best person for Nigeria with this present system, we are not going anywhere. That is right. my contribution to this. Uh, right. uh, Adene, thank, thank you, you very so much. much. Um, let me, let me, I'll get back to you after the show and we'll fix the time, you know, that we're going okay. to have you on, talk about that. Uh, John Abba, welcome to the show. Go ahead, John Abba. Thank you, Dr. Rudy. So, so we have uh, okay. uh, Jonaba, your line is that of C, like that of CM. I'm really very, steady. very bad. I'm really steady. My line is like CM line. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, let's go to man of prestige. We, to fix your line, Jonaba. We'll come back to you. Man of prestige, go go ahead. Yeah. Hello, I hear you. Yeah. Hello. Go ahead, go ahead, man of perceive. Forget about oh, Janaba. Okay. Janaba is got the okay. virus from CM. Yeah. Okay. Good morning. Good afternoon. Everyone. <laughs> what does mean? Uh, yeah. That guy is still in, the person is still interrupting. Is that you want to go to him or what? What's going on? I'm no, sure. no, he can't. He he's not good. He's nice. Okay, Janaba, go ahead. Let's hear you. Oh, I'm good. What, what do okay. You, All right. Can see him. <laughs> go ahead. Janaba. Janaba is from Benue. Janaba is from Benue State. Go ahead, go ahead. Janaba, when you get home, listen to this and you see what we are saying. We are not kidding. Your line is is not good. Mm. Try. Okay, good. All right. Um, <laughs> man of prestige, go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon. Good morning, everybody. Um, I just joined. Is it about um, what I, I'm looking at the caption here? You know, it's uh, you know about the Igbos in northern Nigeria playing an Igbos, Igbos of Nigeria. northern Nigeria. So, can you enlighten me a little bit? I mean, I, I just joined, okay, so I don't know how. Well, oh, wait, what have you been doing? What have you been doing watching the soccer world cup? Oh, I'm a soccer fan. I'm a soccer fan. That's why I'm not going to stay that long so, here. You know, two of so, us in so, 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 German and Spain. So, so tell us, tell us what has been going on on the uh, in in, uh, in Qatar. Who who has played today? Uh, um, it has been very interesting. You know, Morocco. You know, Morocco won their game. I mean, they did well. Yeah, I mean, they did... yeah. I they... saw that one. Two two zero. Yeah. Yeah, they did well. You know, so yeah, it has been very interesting the whole game. You know, I mean, Africa has. I don't know. Of course, you know, Nigeria is not the. I think Nigeria is the best team in in Africa, but you know they can't get their act together. So that's where we are right now. Even come on mm -hmm. Ghana, which I don't really rate to be anything. I think Ghana lost. Um, they lost their second game. You know, I think first and second. Mm -hmm. I think they, they, the last one they barely lost three two. So, but that's not a, that's not an achievement. So the 
the best team so far that is Dide some kind of, you know, it's Morocco that played today. So they have four points. So definitely they're going to qualify. I think Senegal is like on the edge. Um, they lost the first game. Then they won the um, the last game, 3-1. I mean, who did they beat anyway? Qatar. Who is Qatar? The team that <laughs> ranked the team rank, that rank 100 in the world. They're they, they only there because they're they are the host nation. So that's, mm. what, that's what brought them there. So I can't really give that much credit. Mm. Yeah, so they have one more game to play against Equator. So um, I don't know. We may have one or two teams qualify, but, you know, Africa, they, they don't normally fare well, except in a long, long time, you know. So, but that's mm. where we are right now. All right. Thank you. Thank you for that update. Obi, I know, I know that you watch, you are a soccer, a soccer fan. <laughs> um, and, and in politics, just like in soccer, you know, when people look at Nigeria, like like uh, yesterday, someone was saying that what we're seeing in, in, in our sports is the same thing we're seeing in our politics. Do you see any, any connection? I've not been watching soccer very much since I've been in the U.S. <laughs> Uh, uh, I, I don't know what to contribute. <laughs> no, okay, I okay. I okay. On that area. Um, I, I, no, no, Rudolf, I no, no, no. Area, no, no, man of area. man of prejudice. Let, let's finish with the guest <laughs> so that we can let him go and then we can talk okay. about <laughs> other things. Uh, CM, let's try again. Do you have any any um any final words or question or comment? Uh, Rudolph, I think people you... from London are having a lot of problems. They, they <laughs> no, no, CM, 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 let me tell you something. CM, CM, can you yank off that thing in your ear, the whole thing, and let the computer be alone mm -hmm. and speak speak to the computer? You know, let's see. We, we're actually better. hearing him very well now. Okay, let's see. Okay, CM, go ahead. We're not. Rudolph, let this. me tell you, people in London are having a lot of problems. They don't have any electricity. I mean, they have electricity shortage because of the Russia problem. A lot of them are a lot of them are using heater instead of electricity. I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> oh, but yeah, something. <laughs> so it, 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 it's uh, of prestige I had. I thought it was CM. No, it wasn't CM. CM, CM, we've been having problems. We want to start a GoFundMe. Uh, so that we get uh, what what's his name uh, Elon Musk to send uh, send in uh, <laughs> send in uh, uh, internet to UK because we have to do something. <laughs> CM is so important that we can't let him be uh, in this uh, situation. Where is CM? Is he in, in New York or is he in Europe? No, London, UK. No, he, he's in London. Yeah. Okay. We have we have got to upgrade his internet. You know, this is what can you, can you hear me, Rudolph? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead. Hey. All right, CM. Quite unfortunate, but uh, Obi, uh, we have to thank you so much for hanging out <laughs> with us. It's, it's, yeah. Thank you for. Go ahead, CM. Can you, can you hear me? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> you are fortunate. Can you hear? Okay. Can you hear me? <laughs> so thank you very Obi, thank you very much for thank you very much joining. Appreciate it. Yes. People are already saying that. <laughs> People are already saying what? <laughs> All right. Block just talk. King Charles, you know, it's not even up to the year King Charles took over. Everything went, went down, you know. But how are we going to do this? Ten years from now, England might be, they, they might be coming to Nigeria to look for work and, you know. See, we can't hear you. There's no need. There's no need. Wasting time. Sure. See, thank you very much. You can. Ah, terrible. Obi, I would just want to thank you so much for joining us, and we appreciate your time. Um, <laughs> and um, we will, um, we we'll hopefully we will get you back. Um, when you 
I know you have this book that you've been working on, so many books, but one of them that I'm interested in is says the Biafran Babies. Yes. The collection. The collection. It's been, uh, it's been it's, edges. It's, that, uh, yes, yes. So um, whenever you have um, okay, such okay. work out, let us know so that um, we can bring you here. And, and maybe uh, what I want to do is to bring, bring you... Uh, and women man, and some other uh, people to to actually have a discussion, not a debate, a discussion, and and okay. maybe we can iron out some of this some of this topic and some of these issues. All right, thank you so much, and I will see you. I will talk to you later. Thank you, thank All you right. guys. Bye bye. Okay, so we will um, take a break, and then we'll be back to continue the conversation. Okay. Okay. All right. So, um, welcome back, everybody. I know that um, we've been. Um, it's been. It's been a very, very uh, interesting conversation. Uh, while we we were on, a lot of things are going on. Let's take a look at some of the videos we've been getting from yesterday. I don't love you. Wahala. <laughs> You guys will see you. I see why you cannot climb the stairs. They are happy as see what you. What I watch you. What I watch. I see why you cannot climb. He can't climb the this He can't climb the stage. What I watch as they are happy him. What I watch. See how they are carrying as what you. They are carrying as what you to the stage. What I watch you. And they carry as what you know the stage. Look at look at. See 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 them see them see them happy as what you up. Oh my God. Oh my God, it's bad, too, too bad. It's a serious shame, man. Serious shame. All right, so um, man, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, that's uh, our leading candidate for president of Nigeria, uh, uh yesterday in Lagos. So let's round up. For those who watched the interview with uh, Obi, what's your, what did you take out of that? Let's start from there. Anybody? The Black Sun, welcome to I the mean, show. I, mean, I, I didn't, so I didn't. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Rudolph. Okay. Did you watch the interview with Obi? You mean me? me? Yeah. Um, a, a, a bit actually, so I was doing okay. some other things, right? Okay. So before All you right. proceed, who is he? I don't know who, who is he. He's a professor of world literature and expert in, on uh, Achebe, Shoinka, um, and people like that, Christopher Kibo, and he wrote the book called uh, Ebos of Northern Nigeria, amongst other uh, okay. books. Yeah, okay, so that's right. why, yeah, that's why we, we picked that topic, you know. Um, all right, so let's talk about what happened uh, yesterday. I, I saw in today's newspapers they were saying that the Speaker of the House was um, actually angry with people like you who make fun of uh, Bolatinubu. Why, why, why should we not make fun of Bolatinubu? Anybody has an answer to that? No, I don't. We should. It's part of politics. I mean, he's not. He's not. He's not beyond that. He make fun. I mean, it's part of politics. Even um, give me look up. People been singing. I mean, I dance to it too. I mean, it's, it has, it, it, I mean, it doesn't mean we shouldn't make fun. I don't see anything wrong with that. It's part of politics. I mean, look at what he said yesterday about Pinumbu and I mean about Atika Nobi. So I don't have an issue with that. I mean, in as far as you didn't play like a god of politics, it's it's all politics. I mean, we have to you know enjoy it. Whatever way you look at it, you don't get so emotional about it. Mm -hmm. The statement that he made doesn't even make sense. We are not, we are not making fun of him. We are in, you know we're having fun. You know it's all mm. politics. That's the way I look at it. So, I mean, if you have to take an offense to that, then you're not ready for you know for the big game. Okay. That's the way I see that. Mm. 
Okay, the black sun. Yeah, I don't think uh, I don't think anything is wrong with that. Actually, it's like um, a man of prestige just said, it's, it's time of politics. Let's go back to the time of Jonathan, what they did with Jonathan, actually. I think um, he has been the, the only president that actually most people made, made fun of. Jonathan, his wife. I think, I think this time, this politics is a little bit clean. Nobody is making too much fun of anybody. Nobody is making fun of Buari. Nobody is making fun at least. Actually, if Tunubu make, a, make fun of somebody, at least somebody has to also make fun of him. So once you once start the stage, every other people follow. So and they shouldn't be angry. And then it's just a season. And it's all people are using it to, to have fun, make them get happy. I think there's nothing better about it. So Tunubu, with all his um, antecedents and everything, at least there are many things um, to make fun with about him. Uh, so I don't think there should be any reason for to, anybody should be uh, to be angry about that. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, Dozier, you have any any comment? Um, I just got locked up for a little bit. Um, where are we, please? <laughs> we just showed the video of, of Tinubu uh, yesterday in, in Lagos, and we wanted to know if you have any reaction to that. Um, I have a very visceral reaction, but my reaction goes more to the educated ones who are blatantly pushing him up. I mean, just look at the world as it is. Look at Nigeria as it is. And your preference is this man, given his character, his personality, and the legos he created. In fact, I, <laughs> I brought up the comments earlier in June that he actually created Lagos in six days, and on the seventh day, he rested. <laughs> Reality is that how can an educated person with a worldview actually prescribe this person as president for Nigeria, given the fact that this country would have been dismantled almost two years ago. Given the fact that uh, the, 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 if you are to assess the sense of satisfaction of the country, you might find it in 10%. Given everything that is going on in the country, the prescription of an educated man. I used to hold this lawyer at a very high esteem, um, given how he was speaking during the time when we thought Buhari was going to be the next messiah. That's why I don't speak for Kaila more. Yeah, I used to hold him with great reputation, but the saying is true that immediately you put down money and be a Nigerian man, not even Ibo, a Nigerian man would just fall for the money for anything. I don't know how much is being given. All of them, I look at them well educated. You look at this man. This is who you actually want. It's it uh, it um it makes me angry. I just being angry is just the least of the thing I would say. It makes me really really angry. If you really want a Yoruba man, look on the list. There are so many of them, and this is who you want. This is actually who you want. To govern a country in tumult, a country literally at war, a country in abject hunger and poverty, this is the internet you find valuable. No, I'm sorry. All right. All right. Um, so these are some of the headlines from the event yesterday. Uh, there was one that I'm interested in. It's kept saying uh, in the Guardian of today, I cannot be killed, Tinubu declares. Uh, in the nation, which is his uh, newspaper, they talked about a massive crowd at as Lagos rises for Tinubu Shetima. Uh, in the sun, they have this headline, no opponent can kill me, Tinubu declares. So what's, what's that about? Did anybody hear who is trying to kill Tinubu? Hmm. I've not heard anything about that. I mean, of course, you know, 
Since yesterday, I've not been on Nigerian space. I just this is the first time I've been here talking to you, so I don't I don't know what's going on in that space. Speaking about the rally, if I may um, narrate a little bit about the rally, I mean I had a version that he said, you know, he said PC of he tried to say PVC. I mean, let's be real about that man. Forget about his gap. Okay, he's very synonymous with the gap, so that's gonna keep on coming. But the the main problem is that man held. Look at them pushing him. He, he hasn't even been a president yet. They have to push him to go to the podium. That should be an alarming. That should be an alarming. This man, I'm not a medical doctor, but let's be real. I don't know how old he is. It doesn't have to do with age. He can be 80. Somebody 50 can be more sick than somebody 80. So that man is not healthy. And we are pushing him to be to go you know to go precise over 200 you guys will see you i see why you cannot climb the stairs they're, they're exactly. happy that's what you what i watch you exactly. what i watch i see why you cannot climb he can't climb uh, you see he can't climb the stage what i watch as they're happy him what i watch see how they're, they're carrying us what you they're carrying us what you uh, 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 to the stage what i watch you and they carry us what you know the stage look at look at see 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 that, see that, see that happy as what you, oh, oh my God, oh my God, it's bad, too, too bad. Yeah, I mean, this is just, this is just nothing. I mean, if you look at someone when he was in the car or whatever, people have to guide him beyond his side so it doesn't fall out. That man has to have something, any kind of medical condition. You can't give an example because some people, some people are keep on saying, after all, your president here is 80 years old, but the man has shown his birth certificate. He ride bicycle. He make gap every now and then. He's been doing that gap more than over ten years ago. So it's not something new. So that's different. Some people make gap. So that's not even his problem. He has some, he has some mental rehabilitated, you know, debilitated, you know, health issue that nobody know. Of course, he doesn't want to show his birth certificate. It's just all this crap people are talking about. Okay, what people have to understand? APC, you know, APC has the structure. I mean. They are the ruling party right now, so they can have as much card as they have because the difference between that party and the B party, which is pretty much organic, when they go to a particular state, like when they went to a, a Bonnie state, they have all the whole governors from all parts of the countries. Of course, you know, a lot of people are going to come from different states and come there and participate. So I don't really pay too much attention to that um, rally. If he wants to feed, I think it was held at um, Tesla in Balogu Stadium. If he wants to fill that stadium and the next stadium, I just sent to which is national stadium. I don't think it's functioning right now. He can fill it, but that does not mean anything in my own point of view. Yeah, you know, about rally and uh, crowd. I mean, you can people in USA can testify about that. That crowd doesn't translate to vote. You know, so it's just a very, I don't know. Sometimes like the other guy was saying, sometimes you know, I can't even articulate my words in the way I want to because I get mad when it comes to that country what's going on in that i mean I, i'm going home i mean next month but i just have to pray you know i have no choice i have to you know that's just such a pathetic you know country i don't, I don't know where we're going to find ourselves we're doing we do our best you know try to let our people you know in home to vote vote for the right people. that's the, that's the, that's the best thing we can do i mean i don't have any any voting rights so what can i do <laughs> Mm. Anyway, All right. Thank, thank you. Th thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we have to um, cut today's show short because um, I have another engagement uh, somewhere that I have to leave soon. So Adeni, Adeni, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. I'm hearing you. Okay. Are you are you in Abuja, Adeni? Yes, I'm in Abuja now. Okay. So did you did you yeah. watch uh, Tinubu's uh, uh, campaign? Have you been following his campaign? <laughs> My brother, uh, Doctor Damages, like I used to say, I'm not interested in what they are doing because what what do you expect them to say when they are campaigning? You cannot expect anybody campaigning to tell you that they will not provide healthcare, provide infrastructure, provide. They will tell you the good good things you want to hear now. So what am I going to listen to what I have already known? I won't be wasting my time with all these personalities. We are not addressing the issues in this country. The issue is that we have to create a system that will make these personalities not to be corrupt, that will not give them absolute power, that will make them to be like emperors. That is what we should be after. That should be the, 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 
the the scenario now that we should be talking about. All of them talking, they are just opportunists looking for opportunity to get that title president. I'm not interested in individual. Um, Dr. Dr. Thank you. Thank I'm you. Not thank you so I much. don't look at them. I laugh. Mm -hmm. Jose, you wanted to say something. Yes. Um. Well, two we points. Were, uh, I want you yeah. to refer to the yeah, South that African that means, experience. Have you, have you heard of it in uh, social media? Okay. Um, Go ahead. I want to refer us to the South African experience during Jacob Zuma. Mm -hmm. Jacob Zuma was abjectly corrupt. In fact, he even, can I use the word, mortgaged out the, the finance system of the South Africans to, to, to the Indian gang brothers who came up and actually was running South African government through him. What brought Jacob Zuma to his knees was accountability. The, the law of South Africa made it mandatory that the president must come upon appointment or when he's called or once every month to account of the state of South Africa and not just make a speech. He has to be questioned with time within a space of one week from any representative. And I thanked Julius Malema. I watched it so religiously. How Julius Malema teared that guy. It wasn't him alone. There was uh, the other guy of uh, the other party. It's also black. They did not spare him. They did not spare him. That is one point. If we have to have a country, we have to have a country, just like the gentleman said, uh, Denis, um, of accountability, real accountability. People must not be afraid of their life to come out and speak to power. And let me tell you another thing that is a major concern. It doesn't, we might have the best lawyers in, in Africa. But there is no legal system in Nigeria. There is literally no legal system. And I don't even know whether the lawyers are interested in making the money that is out there. There is no legal system. South Africa, it was the legal system that actually mesmerized uh, Jacob Zuma. He wanted to turn the legal system all around, but he could not. The legal system brought him to his knees. Whether it is Buhari, or anybody that is to come, if we don't have a legal system that is self-authorized and respected and valued, I don't think we're going to have a country. Um, what is the last point I was trying to make? I think those are about it. it we, when you compare the rest of Africa, they may not have the money that we have. They don't have the money. Even the countries that surround us that are poorer than us, they live far better life. Far better life, by far. In a country without running water, about 6% has running water. In a country where you don't expect a 24-hour electricity. In a country where if you fall sick, you're on your own or you are dead. In a country, and all they announce is money, 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 money. You don't know where it goes. It's a bizarre place. No hope. There is really no hope. I, I, I would be surprised. I mean, some, one of my friends, I usually call him, and he will say that, um, he will say that um, OB is going to win. It's good because I wish so. The reason why I'm laid back is because during Buhari's, I made a lot of enemies. I wished he win. I was always on my phone. I campaigned like a crazy mad dog in Facebook. But I am not doing that anymore. You know why? It's like the same movie again. It may not be exactly, but it's like the same movie again. I watched Sahara reporters as everything was coming in. I was so crazy about everything. I lost all my time on it. But I'm not doing it again. 
OB wins, OB doesn't win. I don't think that is the issue. The issue is that the structure and the system of what Nigeria is has to be reviewed. Thank you. Yeah, Spina, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I just, uh, I've been watching, but I, you know, I just came in to just make a brief uh, comment. I saw the, the, the video of uh, uh, Tinubu being pushed. Can you imagine Tinubu wins, right? Let's imagine he wins. Can you imagine the spectacle when he comes to the United States, he can't get down the, the airplane. Somebody had to carry him down. Imagine the spectacle. You know, in a way, in a way, my mind, you know, I want him to win. That way Nigeria can die. When I say this, people don't understand what I'm saying. I want that man to win. That way that country can die naturally because he's going to humiliate everybody so bad that all those idiots running around voting for him, want him to win, they're all going to cry when he humiliates everybody. Uh, the the guy that just came in uh, the, uh, the what's that Denny he, he, he said that oh I don't pay attention uh, I just want to I think he's interested in the changing the constitution he has to realize Obasanjo came in he didn't change the constitution right uh, Jonathan came in he didn't change the constitution. You know, if he did get in there, maybe he would do something. But he doesn't get in there, nobody else will change the constitution. The country will just die a natural death. If that country dies, I will celebrate. Huh? I will celebrate so much. Some people there, you know, I don't want to mention them. I don't want to make anybody angry. Some people there, and you can tell when they come into your forum. You know, you can tell by listening to them. They want that country to continue the way it is. They want that country to continue. They don't care about the suffering of our people all over the place. Suffering of Nigeria. Even their own people are suffering. They don't care. Why do you want the country to continue? The country is useless. It doesn't produce anything. Why do right. anybody want that country to continue? They should just divide that country. Let everybody go their way. You know, get off my land and let me let me and my people go. You go do whatever you want to do. Then they, they, they let, let us go. Then they yeah. can go run whatever they want to run. We're not going to follow them. I want the country to continue. I just want it to change. Continue right. for what? Let me see. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let me, okay. Yeah. Well, let me, see. Let me Can I say something, Mr. Rudolph? Yeah, go ahead. I'll contribute. Okay. Um, Nigeria, uh, we all know that Nigeria has a problem, right? And um, Nigeria as a country has no problem, but Nigerians has a problem. And this problem, we all know it. And but we don't want to face this problem. I remember in the 80s, early 70s, 80s, we talk about pipe on waters, regard for the law, civil servant are proud of being a civil servant, they enjoy their job. Even at that time, if people get, can get their cars by mortgage, by mortgage and things like that. What in, one question I always try to ask, how, how do we get to this level? What happened? What changed? Actually, it is the people. The people are the, peop are the ones that change a nation. Nation doesn't just change because they want to change is the people and we have we have a couple nigerians are going a people that will praise what is bad and reject what is good anything that involves this money nigerians want to go in that level on that direction um mr uh, Duzi was talking about the the legal system right all the lawyers are there and they're also the ones that are, that are destroying the laws you will see a, a judge, you will see a lawyer. He knows, okay, let's take an example about um, Imo State election. I, I, it's, if you disqualify the first number one, the first one, they were about number two, number three, and then you went and gave the victory to number four. What type of judgment is that? 
This is quite clear. So if, because no nation succeed, no, no, no nation grows, no nation live in peace or anything work when the lawyers, the people that are the custodians of the law, the interpreters of the law cannot be able to give a true interpretation. They put their selfish interests first before the nation. There are two, there are two organs of the government that makes the country what it is. The executives and the judiciary. And in Nigeria, those two organs are totally rotting. And everybody don't talk about it. The people in government, they have immunity of corruption. So they can do anything, whatever they like. They can embezzle any amount they like. Nobody talks about it. Nobody's taken to court. They say it's immunity. So the people, we have to, the people have to rise. We have to rise up against these people. Right when we look the histories or history of the countries that have today are what, what they are, it is the people that rose up that fought against this system that fought against what they were doing. And then when they fought against it, the good ones that came up it's not by politics alone. Sometimes, uh, like my, my late daddy used to tell me, say, he said, every country of the world that are today, what they call the, the G5. All of them fought a bloody war. He said, without the shedding of blood, there's no salvation. So, did, did, did we, Nigeria fight a war? Yeah, or Nigeria. Another one? We, no, no. Uh, let me say what I think about the civil war, about the Brafa no, war. It's okay. It's okay. We, we are around. No, 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 no. I just want to say why, why I say that. Because why we are still like this? Because that war was fought in one single region. Most of that part of Nigeria did not feel the effect of that war. If the war was fought all over Nigeria, at least we are having a better thinking. Mm. There have been different people. So that is why the people today are very uh, passionate of when they talk about the Brafa war because they suffered it mostly. And the other part of Nigerians never suffered the way the, the, the Brafa suffered. You know, so yeah. we have to come back, we have to come to that point whereby we have to try to re engineer, rethink, and the people have to change. So we have to try to vote out the people who are corrupt. We have to at least let's let's let's, let's hit the nail at the head, so that Nigeria can move forward. It's the people that make it. It's the people because once we are able to fight against that mindset that I have to be there, and when I'm there, I have the right. I have the right. They say they have the right to embezzle, to do whatever they like. So when that keep, keep on happening, there's no how we are going to move forward. No matter who comes to room. But when the people are not going along with them, then they, they don't know how it's going to work. So we need people of integrity. People that says I'm in, I have integrity and I don't condone any person that does not have integrity. That's what you make Nigerian forward. Thank you. All right. Thank you. We are just rounding up. I just want to get uh, hear from the people I've not heard from. Uh, Maria, um, last words. Yeah, thank you, doctor. Uh, sorry, I have to log off earlier. I was actually on my way to church when I logged in. So I got to church. I have to concentrate on the gospel of the day. Did they say yeah, anything like, that inspired you, you know, to that did you find the solution? Yeah, there is always a solution. God has no problem. The problem is with us as a people. You know, who, there is no limitation, limitation with God. There's, in that Bible you see there, it has chemistry, it has biology, it has politics, it has uh, whatever you can think about. So, our the whatever we can get from that book Bible, you know, it's only limited by the extent which can go to our, by our imagination. So today is all for preaching anyway. I listened to the last uh, uh, panelist. He said a lot of things. We are all playing politics, and politics cannot take us anywhere. The same people we blame, we are not different from them. You know, the only difference is that we have not had opportunity to have our share of the country in Nigeria. Oh, he, he may mention us of what he has struck my mind. Inter tweet, interrupt. No, 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 no. Well, let, let him finish. Uh, Jose, don't, don't interrupt him. Go ahead, Omori. I can't answer any question if he wants because, uh, you know, he says something that struck my mind. Most of us are living in America. We are living in Britain. We are living in Japan. 
Somebody rose up at the time to fight for a better society. Doctor, I cannot thank you enough. Uh, you've provided a solution to my philosophical uh, question of why. Why this, why that? Why will a politician embezzle so much, you know, he does not need? Why will the politician store uh, money in, uh, in seaway? Why will a politician store money in overhead tanks? You know, your platform has been able to provide solutions to those uh, questions, why, why questions. I've not been able to find them in any books. You know, I've read the Chino uh, Achebe's. I've read there's so many, you know, nobody has been able to find solution to these questions. Now, your platform has provided me opportunity to find out that we are all guilty of the bad situation we have in Nigeria. So, the man said, the last uh, panelist said, politics is not enough. Politics is good, but it's not enough. We are all playing politics. Like I said before, I asked a question like, you know, the well, our people are working against Obin and all that. Even those that are for him right now, they are just there temporarily. Somebody, a number of occasions, people will come here to say, we want to try this one first. If it does not work, we go back to the high pump. My other question is, why can't you think the same forces working against Obi right now? They are still with you in the Brafra land. They are even the greatest problem you have working against high pump and against the canoe. But you realize this fact. We go nowhere as a people. We are playing politics. We are, we are looking for the easy way out. There is no shortcut. There is no easy way out. Until we begin to see Nigeria as a nation, we can, just like you like a girlfriend. The, back in the days, you like a girl, the father is not in, in tune, the mother is not, you know, uh, does not subscribe to it, the siblings are not for you. You still find a way to, you know, connect with that girl. You know, until we begin to see Nigeria in that direction, we go nowhere. We blame somebody, we blame politicians. So we cannot tell. I, I said one day, America was worse than Nigeria when the likes of Martin Luther King, you know, rose up to say enough is enough. He took a woman to say, I'm not sitting down in that back, in that back seat of the bus. That was the trigger. That was the genesis. I'm not sitting down enough of this. I can sit down anywhere in the bus. You know, you could tell what that one is set out to. You know, they, they had a vision. They had a vision like someday, 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 the children, my children, will not be judged by the, the color of their skin or by their ethnicity, but by the content of their character. The last speech he made was that I've been to the mountain top. He said, like every other human being, longevity, you know, my, uh, you know, uh, it is necessary. I uh, would like to live long like every other human being. He said, it doesn't matter to me now. He was prophesying his death. Until we begin to have the Martin Luther King mindset, we go nowhere in Nigeria. It's not enough to be emotional. It's not enough to be passionate. You say one thing, you do another thing. Nobody sees Nigeria as a nation, as its own country. Everybody is talking of, if you ask that question, Nigeria has not done anything for me. Until we begin to flip the coin on what we can do to make Nigeria better. Everybody sees Nigeria as a Buhari. Nigeria is not a Buhari. Buhari will live and go, just like the way the Obasa just have gone. They will die and leave Nigeria. If we continue to treat the Nigeria the way we treat it, we go nowhere, my total damages. I can continue on and on, but time will not permit me. Thank you for your good job. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Omori. Thank you so much. Uh, Eddie, Eddie, welcome to the show. We have just a few minutes left. Uh, unmute yourself, Eddie. Hello. Good evening, everybody. Thank you, Dr. Um, yeah, it's uh, good to come on the show. Uh, my, uh, my submission is this. Um, Looking at the situation in Nigeria, especially in the Southeast, and Obi being the candidate, irrespective of whether it's Igbo or not, if Obi will have to, if the only chance Obi has is if the people in the Southeast will come together, because it's a, it's a shame that, um, it's, it's a shame if, um, what's his name, um, the candidate of the APC, Bola Tunibu, is even talking of getting votes from the Southeast. It's a shame if the articles, the likes of articles, are talking of getting food from the southeast. By rights, no, not by right, by um, uh, what's it? Um, uh, fairness. They should have given it the ticket to um, somebody from the southeast. So my thing is this: you can't be saying people should sit at home. You can't be saying you can't be kidnapping. You can't be terrorizing 
your fellow individuals and at the same time you want your best shot at the, to the presidency is to be so most of us in the in the diaspora we should talk to our politics is local let's talk to our people in the village in the town halls let them talk to the, the because they know the people in the, they know the people um, um, um behind the kidnapping they know the people behind the um before they used to say the fulanese and i know the fulanese they still do their thing but the people kidnapping the diasporans coming back home for christmas our brothers the people terrorizing our women in the village our brothers so let's talk to these people because if people if if the if if obi can win win the southeast then unfortunately he can't win nigeria if he can't win his backyard then he can't win nigeria no matter because charity begins at home you can't be saying oh obi has um um um, um 20 uh, well, i follow this other guy what's his name um i of i his brother and i see his analysis but the truth is if you can't win at your backyard how can you win at home dino milai is um um um, uh, um, uh, um canvassing for votes for um what's his name article but he can't win in Kogi State. So what what is he talking? So so this my my Phoenix, let's let's uh let's speak to our brothers in the bush, in the villages. This is the time. This is the they, they should come together, they should stop this sitting at home or not. Let if we can't get um, uh, um by the way, I'm from I'm from River State from Boni. If we can't get it right now, we can't get it right in the next 62 years. So that's my submission. Let's let's speak to these guys at, the, at at home let them use this opportunity to deliver ob and that's it thank you all right thank you thank you so much um we ha we're rounding up where uh ike do you have anything to say before before we go yes i i always like the the passion of mr mori you know but also, I want to assure Mori that all of us are thinking for a better Nigeria, like what he said, that we say another thing and do something else. Uh, that is that is true, but it's not it's not all Nigerians. Listen, we we are we have been Nigerians are learning a lot. You know, a lot has happened to Nigerians themselves. And Nigerians themselves are beginning to realize and understand what it means to be a Nigerian. So uh, don't try to generalize the issue of, you know, we, we we don't want to, we are not, we are not really true Nigerians. We say one thing else or say the other thing. I think uh, Dr. Damage will be a witness here that uh, the first time I came to his platform, I did say here that. You can count how many Nigerians that are living outside that doesn't stick, don't have the country or the country where they live their passport. That it is only few people like me who still have Nigerian passport. Like me too. No I was quali qualified to be a Dutch citizen for so many years, but I we still travel with my Nigerian passport. We are on the same boat. It's not. It's not that. <laughs> it's not that I. I don't. I can't have a Dutch passport. But because I still believe that there is future for Nigeria, it might not be me, it might be my children. But that fight is no more a fight of bloodshed. It's no more a fight of kidnapping. It's no more a fight of division. But it's supposed to be a collective decision of every Nigerian, irrespective of wherever where we come from, whatever our ideologies and belief will be. What is at the table? Is at the end of the day, all of us are pursuing a common goal. What is the common goal? For every one of us, that our children will have a better life even when we leave. You know, so the idea, the idea is that there is no true Nigerian, or we say one thing or say another thing. All of us are not politicians. And most Nigerians today, who the politicians are using, most of them are beginning to understand that they cannot be used again. It, there, there are not many, but we are we are hoping that by 20, 2023, a lot of Nigerians will come to that reality. It's no more like, it's not the, the time of, I know that there are people who is going to get a bag of rice in this 2023, 
but I tell you that majority of the people is going to reject the bag of rice because Nigerians are beginning to realize and understand that it is time that they become citizens of their own country, that the government, whosoever in Abuja, like Omori is here, Buhari will come and go eight years. Nigeria will still remain in Nigeria. So, I mean, that is Asoro does not belong to anybody. You are there for eight years, it can claim to be your place. But a day shall come when you're going to leave. So, listen, Nigerians in this present time have decided that they want to take back their country. And it is true. I keep saying it and I keep repeating it in every platform I am. Do not ever you think that it's going to be easy. Because the, 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 the institution you want to dismantle has taken generation deep into Nigeria. So it's not going to be easy. But we cannot be deep. We can't just accept defeat or, or it's not going to be possible. Or we, we are Nigerians because we are outside. It doesn't matter whether Nigeria goes up well or it doesn't go. We, we are concerned. We are families. We have friends. We have school. We have schoolmates who are living in Nigeria. We have we have friends from every part of Nigeria that are friends that are still in Nigeria. We care for them. That's why we spend whatever we get here to make our family people back home better. So I don't think that all of us are really quite completely so okay. Forget about politics or forget what is going on. If you say okay, you are not interested, then the same people will continue to be there. The same thing that is happening will be happening because you're comfortable on your own comfort zone. So if Nigeria is even going in flame, it doesn't concern you because you're comfortable. But what of your next neighbor? What is the man living opposite to you that is living in a room apartment that the children cannot go to school because he can't afford to pay their school children, their school fees? But you can afford to send your, your children to a better school in Nigeria. Those are the things we Nigerians should be thinking about. Because equality we are talking about in Nigeria is that we are talking about a government where a common man in Nigeria could be able to go to school without without selling his land in order to send his children to the university. We are talking, this is the kind of Nigeria we are talking about. Most of us can train our kids to the university, but majority of Nigerians are not. Buhari has Buhari has led, has led Nigeria backward by about 130 million Nigerians now living under poverty. Are you saying that is good? Are you saying that is the way forward for us? No, we are trying to find a solution. And when we keep suspecting each other, when we keep not, you know, believing and trusting one another, how can we work together? It's just like what the professor was saying. He brought some people in the U.S. I had him say that. But today he cannot work with those people. These are Nigerians for you. But you cannot stop. If Dr. Damage was believing the way all of us, some of us are believing, maybe he wouldn't have this platform. Because probably, maybe personally, he's comfortable. He's on his comfort zone. He can live his life, train his kids, do whatever he want to do. But this is a place he has made for himself and for all of us to come here and contribute to way forward for Nigeria. And he, most of us are comfortable. From personally, I'm blessed. I am comfortable where I'm living. I don't have a problem, but I have family. There are so many of my schoolmates in, in, in CMN Grammar School that are still out there, that, that don't have a job. But I still look out for them because we were school. When we are in school, we are brothers and sisters. So I cannot say because I'm no more in Nigeria. Uh, well, whatever they do there, it doesn't concern me. It doesn't bother me. I don't care. No, because you that live outside now, if you go to Nigeria, you have to go to the police to hire a mobile policeman to guide and protect you. So what kind of money are you making outside when you cannot go to your village? What joy do you have? You have to be realistic, my brother. Listen. If I go to Nigeria, you have to, that money that you have to pay a police officer to guide you for how many days or how many weeks you want to stay in Nigeria. You can use it to give a better life for a, a woman, a woman that has no husband in your village or your kindred. What are we talking about? You think you're okay that you don't go to your country? Or you are happy that you, everything is okay for you here? Yeah? And when you go to Nigeria, because you have money to live in there, to stay in a bigger hotel. Because most of us have a very good building in the village. But you don't go back to that village to live in that building. You don't even dream to go back to your village. With all the home millions you spend in building, the house in the village. The house is empty, filled with grasses. What joy do you have? That this time around you should not be feel, you shouldn't feel concerned about what is going on in Nigeria. Because you can't go home. You go to Nigeria, you are hiding. You are supposed to be when you go to Nigeria like Christmas, now how many of us are going to Nigeria during this Christmas? How many people can sincerely say they are traveling to Nigeria? 
Because the same people you think that you want to come and wake up, they are the same people who will organize the people that will kidnap you. What are you talking about? That's what we are talking about. So, but we cannot stop because of that. We cannot wish for a better Nigeria because of our children, because of our grand who knows, I don't know when I'm going to die. I just said it about 20, 30 minutes ago. My kids, you know, they, they don't want to go to Nigeria anymore. My wife loved going to the village to go and see the way we farm. She loved going to the village to follow my mother when my mother was alive to go to the farm. But she can't do that anymore. We, I can't take her back home. Because the village is not safe. Nigeria is not safe. The policeman you pay money to guide you will organize the people that will kidnap you. So what are we talking about? Let us not because of our comfort zone, we feel we should have. Nigeria is still our country. I still travel with my Nigerian passport. I travel all over the world. I go to America like I go to the supermarket. I go everywhere in the world with Nigerian passport. Because I still believe in one Nigeria. We have fought a civil war. We cannot go back into killing ourselves. Anybody who is telling you, well, let the, well, we go to Ojukuse Biafra is in the mind. It is a war of the mind. You have to cycle your mentality. You have to work for the betterment of your people through the little comfort zone that you have. That's the way you transform the people's life. The question you have for yourself, how many people have you transformed their life to a better life? Change their mindset, their cycle, the way they think. That's why this platform is good, that God is using this gentleman to do that. You, it's not only when you give people money. Which, what is money? But you have to place people in a situation whereby they should understand their story, understand their generation, understand where they're coming from, and let them not live like a wasted generation. We ourselves are living in a, we have lived our life in a wasted generation. I am not praying that for my children. My children can decide, they know, Daddy, listen, don't tell me anything. I don't want to go. I say, every time I travel, I go to them. I say, listen, whatever you are doing here now, in trying to help Holland to become a better country, a day shall come when you have to go to Nigeria. Go to where you might have, You go to where I come from. You have to go to where you are to go there and do something. So All right. Please, as we round up, listen, let, let, let us stop this. Let us disabuse our minds from this idea that Nigeria has, we don't have a, we have a solution. I'm not speaking about Peter B because he's an evil man. No, but among the devils that we have right now, who is better? That's the point. I don't have any, I don't know who Peter B is. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Ike. Um, Let's uh, take a break. When we come back, I will say uh, thank Mike, you. This gentleman and, uh, will be making his network television debut. This is his most uh, recent album right here. It's called Spirit of Love. We're very pleased to welcome Majek Feshek. <laughs> Remember, 
Um, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. It's been wonderful. And um, I know it's brief. We spent only <laughs> four hours. But I will see you all on, on Saturday, those who can join us. And on Sunday, we have a special guest, uh, Kole Shetima, who is the head of Makato Foundation in Nigeria. Um, I, I want to appreciate those that are making comments on the comment section, even those who simply abuse people who are up here making their own contribution. I hope that one day um, those on the comment section will decide to come up and, and have their own say on, on some of these issues. It's not easy. I think we should appreciate people who spend their time discussing Nigeria. They don't have to, um, but they, they think it's important and we appreciate their time. So, Ike, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, the Blackstone, thank you so much for joining us. Doze, thank you for joining us. Uh, Adeni, thank you for joining us. Ed, Ed, Eddie, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, Dovisi, thank you for joining us. And of course, Okija and Okija, I, I didn't know that you joined. <laughs> but um, thank you for joining us. Um, next time, we'll, we'll get to hear your viewpoint. Uh, on behalf of everybody here helping me out, I wish you guys a rest of good week and see you on Saturday. <laughs> Thank you.